Okay, guys, so we are live! So for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I'll be your friendly Elder Scroll Master, I guess, or Scroll Master? I don't know. I still have got to land on what that's going to be. Uh, because tonight, uh, we are uh, we were going to be carrying on with our regular Kingmaker campaign, but we've had a, uh, some folks have had some stuff away from the table that has demanded their attention, uh, so we were down to these low two players. Um, but that presented an ideal opportunity to introduce Dave to the Elder, the unofficial Elder Scrolls role-playing game that we've been playing a fair amount on the channel lately, and which he has yet to actually have a chance to play. So that is what we are doing today. We're returning to Skyrim. Uh, last weekend, we did play a, a proper done-in-one adventure. This is um, going to be very much like the some of the earlier sessions we've played with this, where it's going to be more of a, an a opportunity to introduce uh, a character or a player to the to the game and I think Dave you will appreciate some of the uh, Easter eggs that we'll be uh, indulging in uh, tonight too so um, but let me introduce you for those listening at home to the stars of tonight's session I guess first we'll say in the game we are playing as the unofficial Elder Scrolls role-playing game, third edition. Uh, you can find links in the description of this video to where you can get copies of this yourself. Uh, not only of the uh, third edition book, but also they have a ton of scrolls that have a bunch of extra information on it. It's great stuff. And you can find copies of all of these characters uh, on the Dungeon Musings Discord server in the Assorted Characters tab. I'll paste. We do have a new character tonight uh, that Dave is playing, who he will introduce us to. Um, but I'll post them there after this uh, session tonight. So let me go the order I've got you guys on the screen here, which tells us who you are and who you're playing tonight. First up, we've got Jeff Hay. Hey, everybody. I'm Jeff, and I am playing Tharkul. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. He is a... Kamug, um, maybe? Kamug? Yeah, could be. Uh, he is like a ranger, barbarian, sort of axe-wielding, crazy man. Mm -hmm. But he's not a man. No, oh, he's an Orzammar. An orc. Orzammar, yes. <laughs> um, and joining him is uh, resident armorsmith, Dave. Oh God, Dave! You're not gonna believe it. You actually muted. <laughs> yeah, everyone toast, Mo. <laughs> yeah, immediately. Yeah, just my my cord is having issues getting plugged in. We can hear that? you now. Okay. Um, so don't touch the phone. The phone <laughs> is there. It's it's set. The cord's working. <laughs> uh, I'm Dave. I am playing an Ellsweer assassin named. Sabaka the Steel. Nice. Uh, so, um, what you may not know, Dave, is that uh, Jeff is, uh, as far as we can uh, determine, or as, as far as we measure things here on the channel, Jeff is a veteran of this game. <laughs> so I think he's played <laughs> some, of, if not the most, he's definitely tied with, I think, the most. I think John might have played one more session than you. Um, but we have definitely, uh, Je Jeff has played uh, two sessions thus far of this. Um, and playing the same character as well. And wow. there have been two things. Let me give you some context to what Jeff has experienced thus far. So, I get a thousand hours of Skyrim on PC. Does that help? <laughs> it might. So, uh, Dave, you will. This will uh, not be news uh, to you, but in the event that anyone else is new to Skyrim or to uh, the Elder Scrolls world uh, or the continent of Tamriel and the world of Nern, this, Dave, is of course Skyrim, the northernmost province of um, Tamriel. This, it, uh, I mentioned this before we went online, but our adventure or our kind of ongoing campaign, I guess, on and off, um, takes place about 150 years after the events of Elder Scrolls Online and about 800 years before the events of um, Skyrim, uh, 600 before the events of, uh, of uh, Oblivion. Um, the, at the time of our... Um, campaign um the world is both very much like what you would recognize it and somewhat different 
One of the significant differences for the region is, for one, in Skyrim, the Empire has a very pronounced presence, and Skyrim is very much a province of the Empire. That is not the case right now. Uh, Skyrim is separate, and there is, in fact, no Empire, and there has not been one for around 200 years or so. At present, it is split between the Nibbanese um, group and the, um, what do you call it? Um, and the uh, Collodian Estates. So there are two kind of uh, successor kingdoms or organizations uh, that have uh, taken over for the empire. What it means is that it doesn't extend all the way into Skyrim. Uh, what is also different, Falkreath is an independent kingdom that is allied with the Collodian Estates. So Falkreath is not considered part of proper Skyrim at this point. There are Nords who live there, and everything you would recognize about Falkreath and about Helgen is very much the same, minus a giant dragon. You're probably not going to arrive by cart either, but um, it is otherwise culturally very similar to what you have. Politically, it's allied with the one of the larger estates outside. Otherwise, it is small yaldums uh, that make up um, Skyrim. Uh, you may remember that one of the things that replaces the Fighters Guild in traditional Skyrim play are the Companions. And at this point, the Companions are unfortunately a thoroughly corrupt organization more akin to a shakedown racket than they are a place where you can hire folks. However, the Fighters Guild, the Mages Guild still have a presence in Falkreath and then they still hire folks to go and do stuff in, um, or people hire folks through them to go and do things in Skyrim. Okay. Our adventure has been taking place in the thriving town of Riverwood, or more precisely, above Riverwood. Let me bring you over to... It's funny, in the in the games, they make the companions all noble and, you know... And they are for years. much of the year, like for... It, it, I, there's a lot of reasons I picked this specific time. For one, kind of, I get to have sort of like a lot of things you recognize, but I don't get NPC names wrong or shit like that. It's a really <laughs> good time for when I can kind of have my cake and eat it too. But it also happens that during this time, um, canonically, the companions are rife with corruption. So it makes for an, and I mean, like if I'm running a game, I certainly would much rather have a uh, really, you know, uh, influential evil organization that is active across the entirety of Skyrim rather than, you know, something that's just going to hire people on for, for doing good. So Riverwood is where you find yourself. And um, what th when you met up with Tharkul, um, you found that he had to just finished cashing in a uh, a job that he took through the Fighters Guild. Um, he and uh, some companions uh, were in Falkreath, having traveled here from, uh, or were in, I'm sorry, in Helgen, uh, having traveled here from the uh, the remnants of the Empire uh, in seek of you know treasure or whatever that whatever the reasons are that uh, that brought uh, them here. Um, what uh, Tharkul found. Uh, was uh, the job itself, uh, and you, you may remember this as well, Jeff, was a pretty simple one. An old lady wanted you to find her husband and kids. Yes. It turned out that the job was both easy and more difficult. Being a Nord woman, the task was not so simple as go and find him and come back. It was go and either bring them back or the heads of those who have killed them. They right. had, had gone to a posting at uh, Bitter, uh, at um, Bitter Falls, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Bleak Falls, uh, Bleak Falls uh, Watchtower. Uh, at this time, you may remember encountering, if you've got a thousand uh, hours in Skyrim, you have come across the ruins of Bleak Falls Watchtower a number of times, I imagine. Just outside the barrow? Yeah. Uh, it is just outside. Tell me if this looks familiar to you, Dave. Hell yeah. And so, if we go up to the barrel, we can like hide in the rocks and shoot the bandits there. Never mind. <laughs> so in this era, um, the tower is actually, not, it's, it's not a ruin the way it is. There is an actual still tower that is present cool. there. And there was, a so it was used as a way of just 
you know, keeping an eye on the entire valley, making sure that no one was coming in who shouldn't be coming in. Unfortunately, someone came by and uh, had um, ill plans uh, for the region. And so uh, Tharkul and his companions found the her husband and her two sons dead and still moving. They also found that there was... Uh, oh, Jeff, I lost your camera for some reason. Yeah, I had to reload because I wasn't getting any pictures. Oh, okay, got it here. Let me so I'll hit reconnect. Okay. Maybe I'll fix it. Yeah, perfect. Perfect, perfect. So what, um, what happened after they went there is they found also uh, evidence that there was... Um, you remember the Reachman from your time in playing Skyrim? The Reachman? The Reachman, they were the ones who, in that time, uh, they live in the Reach. They mm. remove their hearts yeah. and replace it with something. They serve Hag yeah, they Raven or Hag... Uh, yeah, yeah, the Heartsworn or... Heartsworn, precisely. There you go. There we go. Somehow, having traveled um, hundreds of uh, miles to here, they were sniffing around in here. What Tharkul found was that they had accessed, not only had they killed here, they had actually gone into the legendary Bleak Falls Barrow. I say legendary because the Nord kings of old surely knew what they were doing when they placed this impressive edifice at a uh, location that would constantly be looking down on Riverwood below. And in spite of past uh, unpleasantness, shall we say, with undead, Thorkul still agreed to travel to Bleak Falls Barrow and go in to see what was happening to try and avenge the husband. What do you remember finding there, Jeff? Inside the place was uh, a bunch of what were they? Cultists? I, the Reachmen. I don't know how to describe them? Yeah, the Reachmen. Yeah. And um, I don't know what would I say about them. They were. <sighs> They were up to no good. They were trying to, I don't, we don't know. I don't think we really discovered what they were up to, to no. be fair. And that's where we, where we left things was with you and uh, Olaf. We rushed in. Yeah, yeah. Rushing in and carving them down, near, uh, nearly dying in the time. And Tharkul suffered a pretty horrific uh, uh, injury to his ribs. Uh, when My liver. They cooked my liver. Yes, that's what it was. They cooked your liver. <laughs> <laughs> Inside of me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the way onions and green? the way spells work in this, Dave. I did not mention this before. Uh, spells go right through armor. Armor does not protect against oh, spells yeah. unless they have a specific magic armor rating. Like your fur, your uh, leather armor protects one against fire. So they Tsunami. managed to cut their way through. But the thing is, they reached a point that they could not get any further. And also, Tharkul was quite badly injured. So what's happened in the interim is, Tharkul, you have recovered from those injuries. Um, your uh, insides are feeling less, you know, um, parboiled right now. Um, but it sounds like with when sort of the news of what had happened here was spreading around uh, Riverwood, you've heard that more folks are interested in getting up there and... Um, trying to access deeper in where surely the riches of the Nords of old is located. So there's been a fair mm. amount of that, but you having been there, you've always known, like you can't just fucking walk up. There's traps, there's, you know, a, a secret uh, lever you need to get past that needs to open a gate and then you can go further in. And that led you to meeting up with Sabak. Uh, Sabaka, forgive me. Sabaka, why do you think you are traveling in uh, these frigid regions so far from elsewhere? Because it's easier to not be wanted in a place than be wanted everywhere. <laughs> Good choice. 
So mm -hmm. Sabaka came up here, um, and f for whatever reason, you guys fell into talking to one another, and it turns out Sabaka is uh, somewhat of a skilled burglar. Um, the subterfuge skill, uh, Dave, is what governs like lockpicking and stuff like that. I actually don't think that you're all that, I think you got your novice in it? I'm novice. Yeah. Oh, one thing we didn't talk about, Dave, luck points, luck points. Your green bar is your luck points. You can spend luck uh -huh. points to re-roll. They refresh at the start of each session. You can re-roll a roll, or you can add one uh, per luck point spent to uh, degrees of success. So, with some discussion and with uh, a little extra preparation, uh, there is a uh, there was a um, scholar uh, based out of Halgen. You went back to, you spoke to, who seemed to give have some insight into the. Um, we talked last time, uh, Jeff, about the Dwemer, the dwarves of um, the Elder Scrolls setting, and how the Nords kind of co-opted some of those uh, tools or devices in order to make these incredibly clever traps and such. This scholar was able to give some insight. Between that and Sabaka's training, you guys are fairly confident you can make your way in there now. And so, plus, you were scared of undead being in there so far, but Tharkul, do you remember running into any undead? No, for sure not. I don't remember a single undead yet. No! So, like, surely, surely, those legends are, are overwrought. Uh, Dave, incidentally, uh, Tharkul has a uh, trait that uh, makes him, gives him a penalty uh, for saves, oh. against, for fear checks against the undead. <laughs> He had a very bad run in with Undead at one point, but he got a shiny axe out of it. So. But I did, yes. You need not worry about Draugr. We will be fine. <laughs> so, what I assume, guys, is that you have agreed to go. Tharkul knows the way to get up there. It's about a three day journey from uh, Riverwood up to uh, Bleak Falls Barrow. Uh, it is still, you know, uh, getting into summertime right now. So the weather, as far as it'll be at the, the peaks here, uh, it's about as good as it's going to get. The um, uh, the only downside is, is that there has been a fair amount more attention on this. And you would know what this looks like, I imagine, Dave. But uh, just as a refresher, here's a good perspective on what um, the hills uh, that you'll be traveling through would look like. So, I would be relying on your survival skills, there. Excellent. It has been three days of miserable travel. Uh, in spite of it being the summertime, it is very fucking cold up here, Sabaka, and your leathers are not really designed to keep heat in. You're not suffering any damage or otherwise any del del deleterious effects, but I cannot imagine that you were a happy Khajiit at this point. Might as well be wet. <laughs> well, I probably am to some degree. Have you talked about what to do when you reach here? Because the thing is, it has. there have been a lot of people talking about uh, Bleak Falls Barrow. Uh, throughout Riverwood, and if people are talking about it in Riverwood, it's probably gone to everywhere else in the uh, Yaldum of, um, or the uh, the hold of uh, Whiterun, and perhaps even further beyond. They're talking mm. about it because... Because it's been accessed, and it seems like there is just a simple gate between what has been explored thus far and what's deeper within. These are desperate times and treasure hunters, uh, they would be happy to uh, try and take advantage of that or uh, they may f finance people going up to try and access it. Tharkul is fairly confident that they did not see any Reachmen um, left uh, on this side of the gate. But you may remember, Tharkul, you heard chanting from deeper within. I don't think that part was necessarily shared yet. No. So, as you guys are approaching, the wind howling, 
the cold biting. Tell us a bit about how you choose to approach it this time. Are you approaching with confidence that no one else would be there? Will we make use of stealth and uh, deception once again? What are you guys thinking? I think it's always... Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I pick caution. What do you, what do you think? Uh, that is my middle name. <laughs> Okay. Yes. So why don't you each give us a stealth check at uh, plus 10, please. So uh, if it's a modifier, Dave, what you just have to do is, uh, if it's a positive modifier, subtract it from whatever you've rolled. Holy shit, Sabak, that's awesome. I didn't, uh, it doesn't prompt me to add no, anything. you can't, that's or... what I'm saying. Like you just gotta look oh. at what, you, before you compare it to whatever stat you're using, uh, you just gotta subtract or add to the, to the number. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but you guys are incredible. Which means that as you approach Bleak Falls Barrow, Tharkul, what did you do to deserve this? Because you can hear the sound of voices within, and you can see the flickering of fire from within as well. Give me two seconds here, guys, to get ourselves set up here. Son of a gun. <laughs> He's not happy. <laughs> Malakath is the name of the Daedric Prince who the Orzammar, the Orcs, pray to. And he's sort of the, um, like the patron of, uh, what do you call it? Of the, um, of the Orcs. Uh, he is the Prince of uh, Vengeance. So you could feel free to use his name, Malakath, as a curse if you so choose. Yeah, that's probably what you hear. Uh, okay, then allow me to set up something in here. This book that I bought is probably one of the most, most used books I've ever had. What is it? It's the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Legendary Edition official game guide. It's got everything in here, like oh, awesome quest walkthroughs, items, gods. Like, yeah, let's go find the Daedrix. Yeah, Malakath. Okay, I am looking for my stats here. Here we go. All right. Um. And I'm going to make sure I don't erase. Guys, we're into month four of no accidental deletions of uh, initiative trackers. So nice. We're going to try now. Oh, there you go. That'll do. Okay. There we are. And... Let's it's a heavy book. <laughs> nice. I tried to set it down and made a huge noise. <laughs> <laughs> and let's use actually here. Yeah. Okay. All righty. So we'll put him over here and these other folks. Yeah. Who are most certainly friendly. Definitely. Why, why would they? Us. Always, always Biting friendly. Dinner. I heard they like cooked liver. They are always friendly. Cooked liver is definitely one of their favorites. Oh. One of their favorites on the menu every night, mm -hmm. whenever there's a dish. One thing I will uh, mention too, 
Uh, Jeff, tell me if uh, this has been your experience too. The notwithstanding the like the d defensive kind of strategy that your character seems to uh, to enjoy, violence of action is something that is rewarded in this game. If you hundred percent take action, do shit, it's much more, yeah, much more heavily uh, rewarded. Okay, and let's put. Yeah, there we go. Okay. One can act from the shadows and still act. Yeah. When you have, uh, I've got your dark vision set up as well, Sabaka. Oh, here. that's awesome. Okay, so guys, let me bring you yeah. over and then I'll shift ping. I have mine viewing at 75% and that seems to be a good size. Okay. Um, but here you go, guys. Welcome to Bleak Falls Barrow. <laughs> <laughs> I should have wore my Skyrim shirt. Damn. Oh. Wearing well, a Grey Warden shirt. I should have wore a Skyrim shirt. Let's see. I have a feeling Davis may not be the last time I run this game, so. <laughs> <laughs> that is a man committed to a bit. <laughs> So can you see okay there, Tharkul? Ah, uh, yes, I can see. Excellent. Okay. So what you can hear, well, I'll wait for Dave to get back uh, before the, I'm so glad he was able to play this tonight then. I knew Dave yeah, was a I, Skyrim fan. I didn't know he was that, I knew he was a big Skyrim <laughs> fan, but I didn't know he was this big. Dragonborn, here we go. Hell yeah. All right, so can you guys both see what I have revealed here. Yeah, they look like looters. Yeah. So here's what you can... Okay, so Sabak can see from the top there. And Tharkul, who can you see? Oh, you can see nobody. Hold on. Um. Oh, you know, I said I was going to do it, and then I didn't do it. One sec here. I'm going to change Sabak's permissions, because that way you can only... Uh, there we go. There we are. All right, so can you only see through your token now, Jeff? Uh, yes. Okay. And Sabak, do you see a two square uh, radius square around you? Yeah. Yeah, that yellow radius? Yes, that's your, that's the reach of your rapier. Uh, and then the short sword and dagger is one less. Uh, you also have your crossbow as well. So you guys would have heard whoever is inside before you reached here. So you certainly would have have you would have time to prepare whatever weapons or whatever that you you want to have prepared going in here. And then the door is slightly askew, uh, seeming to. Uh, I'll maybe let a little fresh air in or let some smoke out, but from what you can see, the um, the folks here do not seem to be... Um, they seem to have likely been here for quite some time, given the amount of smoke that's in here, the smell of cooked meat that you can... Uh, that just fills, you know, your nostrils as soon as you get close to it. And... You can hear them talking, and Tharkul, unlike the last time that you were here, they're not talking in a language that you don't understand. Oh. They are speaking in Cyrodiilic, the language of the Empire, suggesting they are not locals. Now, Sabaka, and actually, you know, we'll do, Jeff, just so you can see as well. I'll put you up here for a sec. Ooh, that work? There we go. Now you can see what you saw before, right? Uh, yeah, now I can see the guys. Yeah. So here's what you can see. These guys, these guys have the look of like poor hirelings. They're, you know, they have armor, but it's like leather armor. Um, this hey. person... <laughs> 
Uh, it's cheap leather armor as opposed to your. Okay, well, you're like, you're like, firing, they're wearing leather armor. <laughs> You'll notice on the character, yours has superior leather armor, which means oh. that it doesn't interfere as much as what Betley or the shittier armor does. Um, <laughs> there is also this dude here has a he's sitting on on something and kind of chatting idly with the others he has a staff that he is uh leaning against and uh mm. you think you can hear someone's deeper voice speaking as well the cyrodelic chat or the tone of the conversation i should say for one uh makes you think that they do not know each other terribly well they're sort of you know it's nothing personal about the conversation and it isn't a, an easy thing. They're making time, making talk. Um, this guy seems to be reading and the th three other voices you can hear, they seem to be speaking Cyrodiilic with a Nord accent. They may be local hired thugs who are just speaking the language of whoever their paymaster might be so right the way that surprise works in this uh, as a reminder is they do not get to make any reactions on the first round uh on the first initiative pass okay so they cannot spend they get their ap but they cannot spend it on reactions in the first things this is that violence of action thing it's, it, which I really like because it does it gives you a huge advantage for the first round of combat but it's also a risk reward which is very much a, a theme in this game of like you cool. can try shit but you know if you overextend yourself so why don't we start things off it also means that uh, they don't when we roll initiative they don't get the benefit of um, their what do you call it uh, initiative bonus uh, to their thing they get they only have their initiative score so your initiative score will be a bonus and you're going to roll 1d6 and add that to it let me add you guys to the initiative order here so roll 1d6 plus your initiative bonus if you could kindly add that in where is the initiative bonus uh it's on the top of the page or on the character sheet is that init rating uh yes Yep, yeah, or initially you're plus 12. Yeah. 1d6 plus 12. And then I... Uh, Wait, I'm stupid. Where did you... Uh, so, oh, there. Ten. You got it? Yeah. I found it. Yeah. I'll take that one. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, and then just add into the tracker. Let me add for these guys. All right. Mm. Okay, where are those actions again? And he is 11 as well. And they are, I think, a nine, actually. I know what they are. Tharkul, if you could add yours in and hit enter. Oh, whoops, sorry, yeah. Yeah, it's, it happens. <laughs> I forgot. All the time. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh. There we go. Okay. So. I'm assuming you guys are moving in here. What would you like to do? I've set up the initiative order. It doesn't mean that you necessarily have to attack. But if you are going to get a jump on these guys... I know I'm I'm mildly torn because like you know they're just kind of hired thugs but I think it's correct to rush them well what you can if it makes you feel better I think you can safely assume you overhear one of them say but what about if someone else comes up yeah and someone else says well we treat them the same way as the other fill them with arrows and dump their body over the side yeah. Okay. Uh, so I can move five. One, two, three, four, five. I can't quite get there. I don't think. 
Okay, uh, your total speed is 11. So remember, your uh, Dave, you can move up to your speed in squares. Uh, diagonals count as one. Uh, during your round, uh, like during the entire round, uh, that's in addition to any movement you get from a dash. So you, okay. I think you've got a 14 move as well. Oh, and I have to remember my weapon strikes from far away. Yep. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because so I want to be, wait, like that, right? Oh, and then I see another one. Yeah. Now, if you want to get the drop on that dude there, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you get your uh, three action points uh, for in front of you. What would you like to do? Uh, first, I want to use the superior steel axe on the first guy. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and make uh, an attack. Now, Dave, one of the things you can do too is you can make an all-out attack. Cost you two, but you get plus twenty to your attack. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's a solid hit, and you can't possibly roll better damage. Now, one no. thing. All right. So they have. Um, Way to go, Jeff. Yeah, and oh, yes, we, there is a new uh, version or new draft version of the rules uh, in the event that folks listening at home have heard us talk about the rules from before and we're changing them now. We're using some of the rules from that uh, playtest version today. One of those is that axes or anything that is a splitting damage, as long as it pierces armor, you get to add your strength bonus to damage. Tharkul gets plus five. That does oh. pierce his one point of leather armor. <laughs> so that is fi eight, uh, a total of 17 points of damage. What does it look like as you cut down this first guy? Wow. I, I think it's just, you know, not not being the aggressor, you know, all the time has led to trouble. And so I think that they're cool is just rush in cut them down yep you know no time we'll ask questions later if one of them's still breathing basically yep yeah so that and is so down he's this giant axe to the back before he can even okay react. so that's one ap do you want to spend any more ap or you want to pass for the turn um how much move have I you used I'm, so far uh i used 11 already, 11 already so, okay yeah and I think that I will hold my other react. Can I hold my other action for when they come in? If two I can actions. Yep. Do... Keep keep two. Yeah. You, and you don't even have to make a contingent. Like if you right, don't... right. You exactly. Yeah. If you don't spend any other uh, any AP on anything else, you do have to figure out what one is spent on. But as long as you've spent one AP, you're going to say all right, and I'm holding on to my other two. Right. Okay. So then it is Sabaka. You can move up to fourteen. And uh, and that's split across the round. You can choose to move like four and then take an action. What do you think you have out right now? Uh, probably my crossbow. Okay. So, um, oh, good. another pillar. Okay. Um, I think he's going to move to there. Okay. 12. Yep. And then going to fire his crossbow at the one who's reading, who's probably just looked up to go, what the hell? And then. Yep. Um, so, so the way it works, uh, uh, your range is 20, is the first range band for your crossbow. That is, uh, the way range uh, bands work is close, effective, or long. At close okay. range, you get plus 10. So okay. you're going to get, basically subtract 10 from whatever you roll on this. And I'm using agility as my mar marker? Yeah, or you my... use your agility for it. So just roll and then subtract 10 from the result and compare that to the agility. Uh, you could okay. spend an action point aiming if you want as well. Gives you um, another plus 10. No, I think there was something about extra damage by the, the one of the sheets. Some kind of special hit. Uh, well, oh. precision, uh, there isn't anything that does extra damage. Uh, no. Maybe I was looking at something else. It was like in the same list as... Uh, oh, the like fire power reference we were looking at? Power attack, yeah. That's spending your stamina. Spending stamina, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and Tharkul, you can uh, top up your stamina. You should have five stamina points. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's oh, the hit. yellow dot, Perfect. right? Yeah. Perfect hit. 
So you spend stamina after you roll damage. So first you exactly to stamina spends luck spends only come after you see the results. Okay, so that makes perfect sense then. Okay, okay so, so I will roll my crossbow. Yeah, attack with your crossbow and then subtract ten from the number before you compare it to your agility. Shwack! Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, it is superior, so roll a second time for damage. So just roll it again. Yeah, just roll it again. So nine, and then because you got an advantage, do you want to treat the armor? Okay, so actually there's one other little modifier here. You've also got two kinds of bolts. You have uh, bodkin and you have broadhead. Broadhead do uh, slashing and the bodkin do splitting. Slashing uh, does your strength bonus in bonus damage against unarmored targets. The bod the um, splitting does your strength bonus and extra damage if it pierces the if, as long as it does damage and gets through the armor. Would you have had a chance to change the bolt on the way in? Probably not. Probably not. I, I think a safe assumption is that you would have the um, the one that does the piercing, like the extra damage. Yeah, okay. Because the broadhead are less effective against armored targets. Because remember, that's right. the partial, full, whatever. Whereas the other one just punches right through. Yeah, no, that's fair. Okay, so your okay. strength bonus is a four, isn't it? Um. Yeah, the strength is a 41, so it's the tens digit. Just like in Warhammer okay. Fantasy 4th. Uh, okay, so yeah, 41. So, so that four. is then uh, 13. What, what do you want to spend your advantage on? Oh, you know what? There's one other option that isn't on the cheat sheet yet, because Zephyr is still work in progress. Um, I, but it's it's to shift. It's to actually like make a move. I really like it. Um, where is it here? Advantage. There's actions. Character is able to choose a specific hit location of the action. Forceful impact, overextend. Yeah, you could hit a specific location if you like. Hit location doesn't, like, apart from armor, it doesn't have any other effect. Right. Uh, okay. Ah, I thought there was one that allowed you to try and... Fortunate hit, character can add half their luck bonus to the oh, damage. So the, the sheet you want to look at is actually the player reference, not that cheat sheet. That cheat sheet is, is out of date. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the one you should be referencing. Not the advantages sheet? Yeah, the advantages sheet is unfortunate. I should actually just take that. Sure. Delete it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that one is from the previous edition. I'll, actually, I'll update that one. Um... Yeah, so you can apply damage quality to it. You get plus 10 to your next melee attack. Uh, you can choose hit location. I'm not sure there's really, I mean, apart from the partial armor thing, maybe press the advantage would be a beneficial one, plus 10 to your next melee. Sure. Okay, because you're already, I can tell you, like, you're already gonna fucking kill him with that shot he uh, that those robes of his don't offer a, a great deal of protection so Conk. with nine plus four is 13 um 13 points a day oh he's still alive but it is over his wound threshold so <laughs> give me a sec here so 13 so be there we go that is the hit he takes uh and you rolled a three which means it hits his Right in the body, he has to make a endurance check or stun check or I succeeded. Uh, so he's taking minus 10. Your bolt sinks into his gut and he's taking minus 10 to his actions going forward and he loses one action point <laughs> as you hit him. That was one action point. You have two more. Would you like to take him now or um, do you want to... I will just flip this over and I will hold off for now. Okay. 
Then it is their turn. So they can't... I need my action points for like counterattacking and stuff. Oh, except my first counterattack if I'm coming. Right yeah. So this guy was quite badly hurt. Um, he is going to. Uh, so standing up is if you're not spending an action on it, it attracts a tax of opportunity. If uh, you do. Um, spend an, attack, an action point, then it, you don't draw the tax opportunity. He's outside a range of Tharkul's massive axe, so he's going to stumble to his feet. And I'm going to move over here. Oh. And he is going to try and heal himself. Uh, fucking failed. <laughs> so I failed with my first spell and second spell failed again. He's strong, struggling trying to get this off, but with that bolt in his gut, uh, he is now out of actions. So uh, one of the things we've also been doing, Dave, is um, I... I I could just try and like describe in fiction where like how overextended people are and whether they've got any ability to react or whatnot. But at the end of the day, if all I'm trying to do is communicate whether they have action points left or don't, I think it's easier just to say. So um, okay. you will know when folks are out of AP. Okay. Okay. Then you can hear the sound of something shifting. It sounds almost like a plate of cutlery sliding across a or like metal plates and then someone draws shing, something secondary can be done anytime right anytime yeah uh, i did just spend an ap so if you would like to spend an ap to take a and actually you could do that before i take my next yeah i'm gonna spend an ap to uh ready a weapon okay so um yeah, I'm gonna draw my rapier. Okay, so your rapier's in one hand, your crossbow's in the other. Awesome use of a secondary action. Um, I will then look up and see what weapon I've got. Ooh, I'll spend one more AP to get something else up. And you can hear, shang, shang. It sounds like a weapon and a shield being slammed together almost as if in a challenge. Mm -hmm. And the banditos, or the hirelings. <laughs> uh, all right, the hirelings are gonna have to stand up one. is gonna start circling around over here. What's their move? Speed, okay, nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, over to here. And I'm gonna spend one AP. Uh, Sabaka, I am throwing um, an ax at you. Wait, can I get you there? Yeah, I think I can get you there. Oh, maybe yeah, I can't. Okay. Are there cover rules or is it just yeah there is cover game, rules it's just uh, cover gives you like minus uh, it's a penalty to the to hit location or you to probably hit. you got about half my square i think yeah visible. um yeah i'll give you cover then so i'm gonna hurl something at you um i'm gonna take a penalty to my hit uh you could spend an ap and make this a defense um but because you don't have a shield the only defense you can use is evade against range attacks oh, evade okay yeah. Sure, I'll do that. There is definitely a talent that allows you to use parry to deflect arrows. That's kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome. All right, so then what we do is just we just roll and we compare. This is a contested thing. So I roll my, my rapier? No, roll your roll? evade skill. Oh, you, oh, that's a skill for it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, I succeeded on a two. Look at that. So what you get here. I rolled a five. Oh, so, minus so you succeeded, but and so let's take a look at your talents. Make sure there's nothing here. Um, mm, 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 mm. If no other characters are within melee range of your opponents and you just succeed on a defensive reaction against the attacker, oh, if they failed their test, never mind. 
Uh, so, unfortunately, that is a fail. But what you could do is spend a point of luck to re-roll. You need to uh, succeed, and uh, ties go to the defender. So I want to roll high but under. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Uh, well, you could also okay. do, because ties go to the defender, you could spend two points of luck to increase your degrees of success by two. Or I could just try rolling again. Or you could try rolling again with one luck, yeah. Yeah, I'll just roll again and see what okay. happens. Ugh. Oh. Is that rolling properly? That's a lot of negatives. Evade plus 20. Uh, I'm trying to figure out why the A... 18 minus 20 is minus two. Oh yeah, no, that's that's right, that's right, yeah, okay. So you rolled a little bit better. This case, uh, you would have to spend one more luck to make that uh, tie a two, and then uh, you would narrowly duck out of the way, or you can take the hit. I will spend the second luck point and okay. touch it. So you, he, yeah, and it narrowly misses you. The other one is going to grab his um, sword as uh, one action, and so that... Move into action. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then actually he's gonna run in to try and get at Tharkul, which means, Tharkul, would you like to make an attack of opportunity on him before? Absolutely. Okay, I am gonna defend against that. I'm gonna try and parry it. Oh, I think he did it, because uh, I did not roll good. Oh, okay, so I got a one. Would you like to lock that? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Oh. Okay, uh, that actually beats me. I only rolled a one. So he comes in and you bring your axe up and down. Go ahead and roll for superior. So like a second time for damage, that's what you're saying? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I just... There you go, the so seven... Here. Uh, it will get through his armor, so that's 11 points of damage. Jesus. <laughs> He's like, oh, shit. Like, against these guys, you almost immediately uh, score a, uh, a wound on them. Uh, that would have hit his uh, nine, his left arm. I failed my save. Hit his so he's racing in, and with a sweep of your axe, you cut his fucking arm off. His left arm <laughs> is gone. Uh, so he has now minus 20. Let's see here. Lost body part. Lost arm. Yeah, so he... A vicious jerk, kind of. See yeah. I am. <laughs> Cool arm chopper. Arm chopper. Okay, so you carve his arm off. He is still going to be able to continue on with his action. I do have minus 10 uh, to hit. Now, when he races in, and then I'll spend my last action point trying to hit you. I got a minus 10 here. Um, you could evade Tharkul, or you could try and parry, or I think you got one AP left, don't you? I do have an AP left. Yeah, I think I'll try. So remember, if you're parrying with your great axe, uh, it's minus 20. Yeah, no, I do evade. Oh, do evade. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. go ahead, roll evade. I, I failed mine. Ooh, 21. You succeeded. Yeah. Succeed. You have advantage. Any, uh, so you could take an immediate special action. You want to, like, try and knock this guy down? Uh, yeah, might as well. Okay. Give us a combat, so like combat style versus his, uh, uh, I got a three. Uh, I did succeed. And uh, it's less than my strength or agility. Uh, strength. Oh, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, and then you're yeah five degrees of success. So he's also he comes in, swings the thing. Uh, you're able to parry and then just overextend, and this armless guy falls prone. I'm so top of the round, Tharkul. Do you have any uh, AP left? Uh, no, no, I don't now. Do you want that to spend it. stamina to gain an AP? Yeah. <laughs> I think I want to finish. Oh, I don't know, because I'd have to step back. I can't do both. Okay. 
Yeah, so never mind. So no. good? Yeah, so, he's within my range. Or he's too close. Okay, Sabaka. I think you've got one left. Yeah. One AP. Okay. What would you like to do? And if you didn't oh. use your full 14 move so far, you still have that available to you. Oh, is this still the same round? Yeah, still same round. We go until everyone's out of AP, and then we oh. go into the next round. Okay, uh, so yeah, I'd move 12, so 14. 14? Oh, no, no, you have, uh -huh. you are out, because you shot, uh, you readied a weapon as a secondary, and you uh, dodged. So you're out, unless you want to spend, you can still move. Shot. Uh, but you so I can still use my move. Yep, but and you could also spend a stamina point to get an extra, um, an extra AP for the round. Uh, yeah, I'll yeah, I'll spend a stamina so I can maybe stab that guy while he's down. So you can't remember your rapier has a re a reach of two meters. You need to be oh, so two I don't meters. Need to be... Okay, so I could move to like. There. Yeah. So you, you see, it's your... going to be on the edge of your edge of your box. Precisely. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. It... Oh, and I can see another guy over there. Yeah. And that dude is a, a knight. Uh, he's a very poorly put upon knight, but he's wearing plate armor. He's got a shield and he's got a sword. Okay. So I move to there, and I'll spend. Yeah. How do I spend stamina? Is there a you just uh, for that? yeah? Adjust the the uh, yellow dot. Oh, the yellow dot. Okay. Yeah. There's just a lot of uh, currencies to keep track of in here. Yeah. And um, um, So I'll spend stamina. I'll make my rapier attack. Go right ahead. This is your second attack for the round. So you don't roll superior unless you hit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and that first one, I don't think... I don't think that's going to hit. No. Do you want to luck it? Uh... <laughs> We just want to save for next round. He is out of actions. It seems like all of them are out of actions except for that knight. Uh, I will save it. Okay. For next. Okay. So then I got to my step. Oh. All right. So you maneuvered yourself there. Then it is uh, there out. The knight still has one. He is going to step here. Tharkul, do you wish to? Spend a stamina point to get an extra action and uh, try. Oh, yeah. no, you've already attacked twice this round. You're... Oh, yeah, no, I have you right. I've already yeah. done two attacks. Okay, yeah. so he comes charging in um, and he says, Oh, fifth! And he is going to try and attack you. So he brings his. Now, you could evade if you'd like. You could spend a stamina point and do that, or you could spend a stamina and try and parry. Uh, yeah, that I'll do. I'll try to evade. That try to evade? Okay. Sense. Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, I succeeded on a zero. Oh, I did not. Oh, actually, hold on. I got a critical success. So um, do you want to spend luck and, and uh, reroll that? Um... Or you want to save your luck to see if this, if he crits on you. Yeah, I think I better save it. Okay. Um, then I hit you in the body. Uh, so his damage is going to be, he brings that sword down. Uh, 1D, so I should be rolling this all at once. Uh, oh, God, doesn't even get through your armor. That is two points of damage. And because you're uh, partially armored, are you partially or heavily or fully armored? Uh, is that, a, oh, that might be on the yeah, under so like PDF. I, I got it right here. Let me take a look. It is yeah. partial. Okay. okay. So he is able to use advantage to slip it down yeah. and cut you. So you will take, uh, that's six points of damage total. Uh, subtract your armor rating of four. So you'll take two points of damage. They're cool. And then would you give us an endurance check please and you get to plus 10 to this because you are an orzimer uh endurance yeah because you are tough as fuck oh there's not a button for not the, a button for uh, no you roll percentiles yes. yeah and compare it to your endurance uh come on big money so it's 1d 100 
less than my endurance. Yeah, treat your endurance is at ten higher for this purpose because okay. you're you're an orc. Oh God! Now, would you like to lock that? Now that I will lock. Okay. Because that is horrible. Oh, it's still a fail. Damn it. All right. So remember, you could Roll 20. burn luck to try and ignore a wound, but let's see what you get here first. Uh, so because you're hitting the body, he slashes you along and hits that same tender spot that you were hit before. Uh, you'll lose an action point at the start of next round. Mm. And uh, you also suffer the crippled body condition, which means... So you're gonna get minus 10 uh, to your actions until your wound is healed. And in here. Oh, that's it. So you're suffering one uh, minus one and Uh, do I still have the cooked liver, or is that healed at this point? That's healed. You can get rid of that. Okay, so, so I'll replace it with, uh, what is this one called? <laughs> um, I, I don't know, hitting the tenders, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so you'll suffer minus 10. So that means minus 10 to all your actions until yeah. this thing's healed. All right, so he hits you with a lucky strike, and then that is the end of round one. Everyone refreshes their action points. Uh, Thurkel, you'll have two this round. Oh, sorry. Not everyone. You will refresh your action points, Tharkul, first. You get two, because they don't... Oh, OBS disconnected. Oh, Hold up. Let's see oh, here. Oh, that's why you went to us, because they were surprised after the first... Yeah. Our two hour first actions, and then... Well, well, the way surprise works on this is they can't take reactions during your turn. So they can't try and parry and dodge and stuff. Exactly. That's why you're able to get in and I wasn't able to resist any of that shit. But also, they're That's now all... overextended. So I don't have, like, some of these characters don't have any AP left, which means when on your turn, you'll get all your AP back and they're not going to have anything unless they have access to stamina. But the way I treat it is generally only, like, named characters or lieutenants have stamina. Most, right. okay. you know, Chuck's uh, no, normal guys will not. So they're cool. Two action points, what are you doing? Uh, well, I'm gonna step back. Okay. I'm gonna attack this guy that uh, really injured me. Yep. Come cool. on, superior steel. A solid hit. Go ahead and roll for superior. 11. Oh, yeah. All right. Nice. So his armor is six and it's full. Uh, but thankfully, you've got that splitting weapon, not a slashing. Uh, you also have advantage. So would you like to, say, damage his armor or get plus 10 to your next attack? Uh, let's Or take a damage. special action. Yeah, let's damage his armor. Damage his armor, awesome. Yeah. That will really piss him off as well. Uh, so that'll be... <laughs> let's see here. Um... Uh, minus six is five, plus five is ten. Okay, so not quite a wound on this guy, but big fucking hit. Oh! And he staggers back. Um, you want to spend that second AP, or you want to save it? Uh, it's such a tough decision in this game because, you know, like, like you always say, you know, taking your move when you can is useful, but being out of AP is also really bad. Yeah. But can you, uh, spend, can you spend stamina to get an AP if you have to? Yeah, it? you can. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the second attack. Okay. So Here then his go. armor is damaged as well. Go right ahead. I'm assuming you're attacking him again. Yes. Okay. Solid. Even with a minus 10, go ahead and roll for superior. All right, Hard so that, that damage, is yeah. 50, and that is uh, enough to hit his wound threshold as well, but 12 minus six, minus five is seven, plus five is 12. Uh, uh, so you responded in kind. Let me make the, oh, I rolled a D8. Let's quit cheating, Madison. 
I did make my successful thing, but he's losing. Uh, sorry, you hit in the seven. Oh man. You hit him in the leg. He's actually knocked down prone. Oh, beautiful. Okay. And uh, that's it for your AP, isn't it? That is it, yeah. Sabaka, you refresh your three AP. What would you like to do? Um. Uh, so they're both prone? Yeah, one is down and like, he's missing an arm. Uh, so he's probably not, or he's gonna have difficulty getting back up again. The knight just okay. got, he's exchanged really brutal hits with Tharkul. And he's been okay. knocked sort of, the well, leg has been knocked out from under him right now. Okay. Um, I think I'll stab it with my steely rapier at the knight. Go right ahead. I can't defend, I'm out of AP. He is prone as well, so you're actually gonna get, um, I think it's plus 20. Uh, oh, that's just his defenses. So I'm rolling against my agility, which is a 54. Uh, so that's a hit. Go ahead and roll for superior. Let's see if you get better damage. Five, okay. So um, he has full armor. So he didn't defend, which means you get advantage. Okay. So, so you could drop full to partial, and then because you're using a exploit advantage weapon, that would drop it down to... Um, unarmored, you'd hit an unarmored location, which would allow you to add your strength bonus of four to the damage. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I'm still trying to figure all this out. Okay. Sure. There's a lot, there's a lot moving, but you'll get on. And the reason, um, the reason you're able to drop it down that for the first one is because of the advantage. The other thing you could do, uh, remember is that these. He's prone? Doesn't advantage have to be prone? No, no, oh. it, it just, uh, remember, advantage is you get it because he didn't defend. You succeeded. Oh, because he didn't defend, okay. Exactly. If you if you succeed in an attack uh, and they don't, and they fail, or they fail to defend, then you get advantage. And you get to pick okay. one of those advantages every time you hit. Wow. Now I can, t why don't you tell us what it looks like as he dies? I think he like, you know, falls over, he's on his side, he's kind of like, you know, up on one arm and it's like ah that space right where your neck is i think i put my sword there <laughs> blood gurgles out and blah, 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 spills onto the ground uh you have two more ap and you have not moved yet would you like to continue acting or do you want to pass i'm going to move okay um and the guy on the ground i know that he's has a he used no all ap his... yeah no AP last time, right? So yeah. five, 10, 20, I hop over the corpse. Oh, remember each is one meter, not five feet. Oh, sorry, right, right, right. Yeah. So that's yeah, force of habit. <laughs> five, 10, yeah. 15, one, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven. We meet again. Now, can you think of why you might not want to be adjacent? Oh, because my sword needs me to be further away. Yeah. I was thinking this, always thinking in previous games about having to be next to the guy. Yeah, that's it. right. It's actually, it's a recommendation in the book to set up the virtual tabletops with this kind of stuff if it's available. J just yeah. because of that kind of thing, it's just, it's easier. Uh, and I can, you can't see Tharkul's aura, right? You can only see your own. Oh, I can only see my own. Yeah, yeah. that's nice too, because then that way it's not cluttered with a bunch of, you know, uh, ones that you oh, make the confusion overlapping. Exactly. All right, so yes. Sabaka, you race over there. That was not an action. You have two AP. Would you like to attack again? I think I will attack again. He is clearly, he has that uh, bolt in his gut, and he has mm -hmm. no action points left. Hello, reader. How's your book? Oof. Solid hit. Roll for superior. I'd like to read it. Ooh, okay. So um, your exploit weakness makes his partial to unarmored, so you're already getting that benefit. Do you have another advantage that you'd like to use? Uh, shoot. 
I close the advantages handout, or is it is it is it just the rep so, player yeah, the player's reference? So on the first page of the player's reference that I'm I'm shooting at the bottom yeah. left, there is the list of the advantages in right. the, the playtest rules that we're playing with. So honestly, I'm not sure there's really one that's necessary here. You're gonna kill him with this strike. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then so I will press, press my attack in case he survives. <gasps> Okay, so then you have one AP left. Would you like to do anything with that? No, I will not. Okay, I am gonna make a morale check. Um, oh, I might have succeeded. Didn't see me. Mm. Willpower, yeah. Oh, wait, that's the, hold on, wrong, wrong stat. Here we go. If my uh, terrible yeah. Khajiit voice gets annoying, just let me know. Not at all. Stop. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> really? Am I in any place to be pointing fingers about people making voices <laughs> <laughs> ever? Okay. I guess there's, there is that. Yeah. All right. So the one on the ground, um, I'm going to make a endurance check for him to see if he loses consciousness. He fucking passes out. So this guy's, uh, if you leave him, he's going to die. That doesn't sound bad. No, and this guy is going to bolt for the door. Uh, he runs one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and then I'll start tapping into his AP. So um, he's going to be racing outside. I'll spend two AP to run away. Um, then, Thark, cool. Do you have any actions left? AP? Uh... Yeah, I do have an AP left, but I've done two. Oh, no, I don't. Sorry, I lost one this turn. I Sorry. Yeah, okay. I have two, not three. Yeah, and then uh, you could move if you choose to. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I'll move. I will move. I'll move this way. Pass this to their camp area. Okay. And then, uh, Sabaka, you have one AP left. I will sheath my rape here. It's back sheath. All right. And then that guy expires. Guys, you're officially in Bleak Falls Barrow. Just in Another time moment. for our mid-session break. <laughs> so we'll take our mid-session break, and then we'll see what can be done about Tharkul's you are a smart dog, my girl. I said, Miss Hessian Bray, she just hopped up from her office bed. <laughs> smart puppy. Um, all right, so then for those listening at home, we'll be back in about uh, five minutes and we'll see what our heroes do next. So back momentarily.
Okay. Let's get some surprises set up for our stalwart heroes here. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I hope for those listening at home that you are having a wonderful start to your weekend. Let's see. Um, mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I think we'll... Oh, you know what I can do? I'll get something else ready here. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I need to grab these from over here. I believe I've got them. Yeah, this is awesome. Oh, great. I'm glad. To... I, I absolutely love this game. Uh, I think it's such a, a well done game. I like the, I already like the, uh, the three action system with the tiles and stuff. And yeah, it's very fucking cool. Um, and the, like, it reminds me a lot, like a lot of the reasons I like, uh, <laughs> Zweihander and, uh, Flames of Freedom and Blackbirds. Yep. You know, um, but they've also added in some other stuff. Like I, I really like that there's hit points in the game as opposed to having like tiered wounds where you're taking progressive penalty kind of stuff. Cause it's just, I don't know. It's something I prefer. I like that there's a wound threshold as well. There's just so many good ideas from that I, th I feel are, are drawn from other games that just make for a really fucking cool overall package. Uh, let's see here. All right. Um, I'm just putting something down here, guys, that I need. And then... Sabaka counts the bedrolls. Compares it to the number of corpses and runaways. Yeah. So the number of um, uh, the number of bedrolls does match. Well, no, sorry. There are some extras in here, but they have been sort of kicked aside or cast aside, as okay. if there was like an earlier camp that was here that has now been abandoned, or that someone else came in. They're cool. Wait. You can remember they these are the remnants of the first time you came through here. They were the mm. crude um um the things Reachman. that were set by the uh what he called by the um Reachman when they came by. Right. It seems as if someone has either left the braziers burning or they simply have not burned out either. Because you can see further down the hallway there is light flickering that seems identical to what you saw before yes well I think we have to jump on them friend mm. let us maintain our advantage now before we you go on injured. Dave what's the first thing you do when you drop enemies in Skyrim uh, oh loot the bodies we loot the bodies <laughs> ah yes well that's a great idea um let me grab. And I take all twenty-five cheese cheese wheels and put them in my pack. <laughs> yeah. mm. Give me one second. <laughs> I forgot to grab later. one book. Mm. Uh, have you played Skyrim, Jeff? No, I, I haven't. They so often you, have cheese. Well, you can get like healing back from eating food. It's not much, but this unlimited ah. inventory, unlimited inventory in the in the game allows you to carry like not unlimited but it's like it's ridiculous mm -hmm. so you can like be in combat and you're down a bunch of hit points and if you're out of like healing potions and stuff it's like you stop and it's like go into your food and go eat cheese wheel eat cheese wheel eat cheese wheel eat <laughs> ham, eat ham, <laughs> ham. and you, suddenly your character is back to full hit points and you just ate like five cheese wheels three <laughs> salmon steaks and two hams amazing um, there is a really clever uh, encumbrance system in this too. There's the carry capacity, but it, it I like it in particular because it doesn't necessarily penalize your combat effectiveness, your ability oh, to attack, good. which fits with the game, right? Like if it's yeah, it affects it other things, yeah, like your maneuverability and whatnot is uh, takes a, a hit from heavy encumbrance, but um, but you can still you know swing a sword and whatnot. All right, so on the. Um, the wizard, 
Uh, you did see him trying to cast some kind of spell. Um, Sabaka and Tharkul, why don't you each give us a lore check? I know you're not trained in them. You can treat whatever you roll, whatever comes up as two, uh, as I'm sorry, uh, one or ten um, less before comparing it to your intelligence. <laughs> Definitely not Tharkul. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not... No. No. Okay. So there are potions on him. I will point out you guys do have uh, potions of uh, vitality on your character. You can drink it to restore eight hit points. Is there uh, that kind of... Oh, just adventuring gear and possessions? We can just write stuff in there? Yeah. Because I have... Uh, oh, Mr. B, we are playing the version three. Uh, the the both of them the RR version the version three are are both really good. There's some things about the third edition I like better, and the third edition is also more comprehensive. There's um, the RR one has a lot of uh, monsters converted over for it, but not all of them uh, that are available in the third edition. So, okay. both but both are, are equally uh, very cool games. Three E I just like a little bit better because it's streamlined and it has the counter attack um, defense, which I fucking love. Uh, so the reason I mention that is because there is something, there is an unusual potion on the, um, on the mage. So how do we determine what it is if we don't have a magical skill? Yeah, uh, you would need a lore check or you would need someone else to identify it. But I think for ease of tonight... Because I don't think Jeff wants to be playing a walking wounded. Like, if this was an ongoing campaign, this would be a fun kind of story thing to be playing with. Of like, God damn it, I'm dealing with this fucking wound, and I need yeah. you know again, damn it. But for the purpose of uh, tonight, a lucky critical hit this early on is just going to make for you having a shittier experience. So I'll assume there is a potion on the mage that you are able to identify that will heal that wound. Oh, very yeah. nice. I think the wound okay. mechanic is a great mechanic and it would be a lot of fun for an ongoing game, but uh, if all we're doing is banging, you know, these characters around through a dungeon, you understand now that the wound system can have that impact? Okay. <laughs> we've we've learned what we needed to for the purpose of tonight's session. Uh, and the wounds are... Uh... I, I like them a lot in they add to like an ongoing game where you have a wound like totally. that cooked liver and then you get it healed yeah. and then it's a sore spot like kind of that happened well, tonight. At one it's of the characters, interesting, but one of the characters from um, I actually uh, made a pregen for for the Daggerfall session we played last weekend. Uh, one of the characters was a healer and his talent. He could spend ten magicka to perform an hour long ritual to treat a wound that either he has or you have. So there is a magical way of, of dealing with it. Well, cool. Yeah. So, then, uh, so that is treated, um, but I agree. It's, it's one of those things that I, I think The Witcher was trying for with its game mechanics, and this, I think, does a better job of. Minus 10 sucks, but it's not so fucking penalizing that you're, you know, you can always all out attack to get a plus 20 on things. So, mm -hmm. um, and the things you're good at, you're probably going to be like a 60 to 80, you know, percent to start with for the starting level that we're playing at. So, um, the bandits don't really have much of, of interest on them for the purpose of tonight's session. Uh, the knight does have, whether this would interest you or not, is your. Uh, your determination, a uh, steel shield and a steel longsword. Hmm. Interesting. So they may sell for good or something like that, but I don't know. Tharkul is... Uh, yeah, I guess you could make the use of a shield if you wanted to swap over to a smaller thing, but... Is the bolt lost? It's in the mage, or can I pull it out? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, we've been... Um, Saying the bolts are, are gone, yeah. Basically, that we're not rolling for random. If you shot, if you shot it, you can assume it's it's destroyed or gone. Or hold on, um, because I don't want. I like that they break more often, um, but I, you can't recover them in the game, right? Because which that is one, yeah. yeah. So why don't we do this well, uh, on a d6, uh, one or a two? Uh, they're recovered, otherwise they're broken. Cool. Okay. 
When you cut the guy down, I guess it um... broke it. Yeah. It's all good. Or maybe he fell on it or something. Oh, yeah. Could be. Could be. Okay. Um, so, was there any coin? Uh, yeah, there would have been coin. I so there is a really fun mechanic that they've got in the game for rolling up random loot and whatnot. If we're just, if we're just, yeah. yeah. So like, I, it's worth knowing that that's in the game. But if we're just, because um, it is a really fun thing. But we haven't been carrying characters over yet. Tharkul's the first character to actually gain XP in the in these pickup games. Well, so maybe, uh, maybe I'm the second. You know, oh, it, it's definitely going to be. I, I think we're definitely going to play more of this. It's just a question of whether you guys want to make your own characters as opposed to playing pre gens. Or, you know, and where we want to play as well, because there's lots of different places we can go in uh, the Elder Scrolls. Um, but some of the, my favorite characters I've ever played on this channel are pre -gens. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> well, um, that is great to hear. Um, then, what would you guys like to do next? I think apart from the, like, there would be coins here. There would be some stuff you could salvage from them. You might, like, pile up their loot on the thought of bringing it with you. Oh, what? I was checking something. Right. I can't remember. One of them threw an axe at me. Is that a weapon that I can use? Um, It is a thrown axe. I don't think it's part of your combat style. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't mean you can't use it. Uh, you can certainly make advantage, take advantage of that. And then just for, uh, for your edification, it costs 25 XP. Uh, to add a weapon to your combat style. So hmm. if you wanted to use something afterwards, you start with with five in your combat style, but you can expand that over the course of uh, play. And I was checking to see... Uh, yeah, shield has to be included. Uh, so Tharkul, what I was checking was to see whether you could use your combat style with a shield, and you cannot. Mm. Okay. 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 I'm not going to take anything. Actually, I will take an axe, but that's just a spare in case something breaks or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a hand axe? Okay. Uh, yeah, it would be a hand axe, which would be... Let's see here. Not even... Don't worry about putting it in the stats, and I'm just going to put it on my, in my gear, so I'm oh, carrying sure. it. Just so you can uh, compare. Uh, hand axe ha does 1d6 damage. It has splitting, and it's a thrown... 5, 10, 15, and it's small, so it can't be uh, used to parry two-handed weapons. If I break a short sword, I can put a hand axe in my spare yeah. hand, in my off hand or something. Awesome. Okay, then. What would Shall you guys like to do next? And see what's in the next hallway. Oh, wait, you've been here before. Maybe, do you want to lead? I can lead. I don't until such time as you have not been places. Oh, we've been to the heart, more or less. But okay. I suggest that we go quietly again. Quietly is good. But when we get to a place where you haven't been, I can go first and watch for traps. Mm, yes. You would know as well that uh, Khajiit uh, have a natural night vision as well. Oh. Yeah, they can see in the dark. Very nice. So. Hey, wait, you're an orc. He probably has the same thing. Does not, actually. Oh, he doesn't. It's right. Yeah. Because you, oh, I think, yeah. the, uh, the Dunmer have a uh, dark version as well. I but... think, yes. Yeah, I was thinking it was the Dunmer, yeah. It's mm -hmm. not the Orsimer. So, go ahead and move yourselves down, guys. Uh, move your full movement. So, you can move uh, 11 and 14. Okay, so. Like, going this way. Yeah. yeah. So oh, the, I, I'll whisper that there, there's some darkened corners ahead. So this heads down a bit, and this is has all the trappings of a kind of a classic ancient Nord um, barrow. Um, it's been down here so long that the roots of trees and such are building their way through. There's spider webs clinging in. You can hear strange sounds echoing down the corridor from further ahead. And there mm. are braziers oh. still burning. Each of those big braziers that are giving off light. Uh, you won't be able to see it, uh, Sabaka, but each of those braziers you come across, it is burning and casting a bunch of light up. My stealth's not the best. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll let you know if, if, we, if it's necessary anyway. It would be contested in any event. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm like here. Yeah. And like leapfrog each other back yeah. and forth. Can't mind my, my screen update. This Dave I found uh, online too. A guy was like, hey, my brother really likes uh, Bleak Fleur like Skyrim, so he made a map for Bleak Falls Barrow. Whoops. One, two, four. Yeah. This is where there were dark corners. The map's actually a little brighter this time, Kev. Oh, yeah. is it? Okay. Yeah, I previously I couldn't see at all into some of those corners. Oh, nice. So it's interesting. Yeah. I didn't adjust anything on it either, so I don't know what... Um... Maybe, my, I don't know. It's weird. It mm -hmm. just seems a little brighter. Like, oh! I'm still getting a light bonus from Dave's token, actually. Because now that he moved away, I can't see, like, in this corner here oh. again. Hold up. Let me see here. Remember you asked before? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what? Hold up. He might be... Emitting light, maybe? Ah, yes. Dave is emitting light as opposed to having night vision. That's the problem. There we go. Okay, give it a try again. Yeah, uh, now if I move up to him... Yeah, now I think the darkness is... Is what it was before. Yeah, Correct. sorry about that. Yeah. I when I was uh, setting up uh, Sabax, um, Sabakas, uh, excuse me, token uh, early on today, I put it. I fucking put it in low light without thinking. So we never stopped to check out this room last time. No. Oh. This is where like to stop. Some Reachmen were working before. Mm. Uh, what I assume is that you grab some of the stuff because I think we said at the last that you were trying to use some of that to figure out where to place the the um, things on the uh, uh, on the lever, um, and that's what you brought to that sage in Helgen. He was mm. able to view them and give you an idea of what you need to what order you need to put things in. So, but it definitely you remember being here. There is also probably signs. The bodies that we, you left behind here from cutting down those Reachmen, they're gone. But right. the signs of violence are still here. Yes. You also remember Jared, down this corridor, this is one that one um, Reachman shaman was hurling fire down at you. Right. Yes. So you would remember as well that up forward and to the right, there's a huge chamber with two levels. Mm -hmm. Do we need to investigate this room? I think uh, uh, Tharkul has grabbed everything he can from here. Oh, okay. Yeah. There were, there were notes and stuff, and there probably is still some on there, but Tharkul sort of grabbed everything he could to try and parse out. He and Olav spent probably hours trying to figure out, uh, well, for one, to learn the hard way that there, uh, the lever that seems to open up a gateway up ahead, it's trapped. Hmm. So they grabbed the stuff from here. It seemed like the uh, either the Reachmen figured it out or they were trying to figure it out. That's what you use to solve the riddle, or you hope to solve the riddle. So. Right. Hmm. Sabaka, when you get to Sabaka, sorry, Sabaka, when you get there, you can hear from deeper in the dungeon ahead. <laughs> Mm. Sounds ahead. Yes. Unnerving sounds. Very. Oh, these are the more dark corners. <laughs> <laughs> you found them again? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this way? No. 
which way? Yeah. There you go, Tharkal. This is where you were hiding in the shadows last time. Oh, right. It's up this way. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember. Yeah. You know what? Hold on. Um, I think you've got one already, uh, Tharkal, but just as a reminder, a hand axe is part of your combat style. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I... You have one, so you, like, you've got a thrown weapon on, on you as well, but you've only got one. I can easily just hand that to you because uh, I was just taking it as a spare weapon and because the guy threw it at me and I'm kind of jaded in that way. <laughs> yeah. Just... Well, I do already have one. You have one, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. what you see in here... Sweep a large, high vaulted ceiling in this chamber. Let me zoom in a little more and let me move over just a scooch. All right, here we go. Yeah, I'm gonna zoom out. This is where we had the, the large battle last time. Two massive <laughs> braziers uh, that are illuminating most of the room in here. Part of the ceiling has collapsed uh, due to age. There's a oversized lever with uh, slotted things in front and there are statues of Nord heroes of old and a <clears throat> gate you can see through here but if you tried to move your token through it you would find you cannot pass through that gate is still sealed and Tharkul can warn you this this is trapped but you have the sequence or at least so the scholar in Helgen has assured you. And what is the sequence? Uh, you would see uh, an order that's a matter of going up and entering it. You're not going to need to make any rolls because you're not assuming that you are not going to try and disarm it or otherwise. It's just a matter of hoping that the sage has it correct. Mm. What well, you can see, Tharkul... This place, when you left it last, was a scene of carnage. There was at right. least seven, eight dead Reachmen in here. Oh, yeah. None. No bodies. No bodies. But lots of blood. Interesting. Sabaka, these things, while crude in comparison to the... Um, gorgeous statues to be found among the uh, cities of the Khajiit. Um, they have a awe-inspiring quality to them, both in their size and the, um, if not the artifice, the surety of the hands that crafted these things. They captured the personalities of these uh, human heroes uh, very well. And is this another statue, a big statue here? It seems to be one of the three heroes that were depicted up there. The bow, the mace, and the sword? Or Yep. And curiously, that is what's on the handle as well. There are depictions. What can be moved on the lever appear to be markings. Spear a staff, and a bow. Mm. And we have some knowledge you have acquired from a sage. What the paper shows is that the orientation on the thing should match the orientation of the larger statue. But what the sage suggests is that the uh, notes that uh, were taken by the Reachmen, they suggest that the statue on the left turns at different times. So there is not a correct one that you can go in and always enter it. You need to be mindful of the position of those statues. <sighs> so as long as this hasn't been sabotaged, as long as you enter them or position them to be in the location that matches the statues on the left, it should trigger without 
uh, any traps activating. Is there, is there a way to examine to see if it's been tampered with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there is. So there's a skill subterfuge uh, you could use for that. And I think that'd be subterfuge and perception. Okay. Subterfuge and my perception score. Oof. PRC? Uh, yes. Oh, not going to matter, is it? Yeah, 89 is mm. a pretty tough one. Uh, do you yeah, want to try? I guess I could. Can I help, help with this or no? Um, so, let's see here. Um, you may. I'm just trying to remember how standard test group tests. Oh, your teamwork. Uh, one person makes the roll. As long as having someone to assist them would be productive, they may re-roll the test once if they fail initially. So there you go. So because of Tharkul's help, you can re-roll that, Sabaka. Mm, nice. I like that. It's a neat roll. Mm -hmm. He's like, I think you're doing it wrong. It's like, oh, you might be right. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, it seems you're looking at this, and it seems like someone has gone to length to pry out and replace the symbols on the on the thing. So they're oh. like one sequence off from where they should be on one of the movable, you know, things. So if, if you didn't know that, you and you did know the key, there's no way you could enter the correct uh, thing. So we can move the symbols back? You could absolutely move them to where you need them to be, to be... Oh, yeah, like, oh this crack should align with this symbol here. Now see how that looks right? Okay, good. Exactly, exactly. So you can have them set to the correct. It'll show on the like on the lever that it's the wrong thing, but the interior mechanism will be in the correct spot. Okay. I'm going to move to here. After I fix that. Okay. Yeah. I want to look... I just want to look down the hallway before you uh, we do anything. Okay. So you're going to open that, but what will it do? Is there something in the next room? I hear noises. <laughs> now I hear them as well. Mm -hmm. I do not like those noises. We must be ready for a fight once this is opened. And you can see Sab Sabaka. What, what is that up there? Are the, oh, are, I. Are those gems just sitting oh. on the table? Mm. Is that a chest? There are treasures in the next room. We should be prepared, but let's not take too long. If if this opens. Maybe you can lure something into the room and I can jump on it from above. <laughs> I don't know if there's a game mechanism for that. It's yeah, fun. I know there is. I mean, they, they would, what it is basically, they wouldn't have a defense, right? If you're not aware, if you're hidden, um, then you wouldn't uh, be able to defend against it. Do you want me to hit the lever? Oh, well, you were going to go up there and jump down on them? Uh, I can hit the lever and then you can stand at the bottom of that ledge there and lure whatever it is into this room and then we can attack it from above and below. Yes. That's perfect. So I'll hit the lever. Okay. Hope it's not trapped. <laughs> you can hear the sound of something moving within. And I'm going to dash up the stairs. And I love this. There's a, I can, you can set up walls that are transparent in uh, Roll20 now. Which is why That's I was able to set up that gate thing. It's fucking cool. So you can get there, but you can't get through. That's awesome. Yeah. So it lets the light through the wall, but people can't move their tokens through. It, exactly. Yeah. So it retreats into the ceiling, Tharkul. You can see light being cast by another brazier up ahead. You're yeah. free to proceed if you choose. Uh, 
cautiously. Okay. <laughs> You're not kidding. <laughs> I love it. Well, he is deathly afraid of undead. And... Oh, yeah. Well, I love that the game rewards that kind of, like, I've got, you know, game mechanic language for how something might be sitting in, you know, uh, in wait for you. I'm going to go that up there just to check the darkness. Okay. Ooh. Can I move through here? It's hard to tell. Yeah, okay. There's a wall up there, but look at that. There looks like there's light up ahead, isn't there? Yes, up down here. I'll peek around the corner. Okay. <laughs> I still Ooh. don't see it. I'll call back quietly, sort of down back towards... I can't see anything yet. Would you give us? Are you uh, stage whispering? <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. I can't see anything. Let me make one uh, surreptitious roll here. Hold on. Well, I'm spending an AP to ready a uh, evil mustache twirl. One sec. I'm going to spend that <laughs> uh, mustache twirl because you can hear from up ahead and allow me to place just one or two things down here <laughs> all right Yeah. Something is stirring down there. You can hear the sound of metal being dragged across stone. Oh. Let's open up that old turn order again. Why don't you guys give us a initiative roll? 1d6 plus your initiative modifier, please. And then I will roll for whatever lurks in the depths of the barrow. Look at us. Hot damn. Holy smokes, Cautious guys. Buggers is what we are. Smart. Smart, smart. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Let me add some initiative trackers here. I know David's shocking that I'd be using undead in one of my games, but uh Dude, it's Skyrim, it's just full of undead. I know. It's a fact <laughs> it just justifies <laughs> my it, proclivities. It, I fucking love it. And the way they use Draugr is so cool that I actually have like been writing almost like Skyrim fan fiction. Because <laughs> <Nice. laughs> like, how could you not? Oh, it's so good. It, honestly, like it's it's one of the things that it, like adds to the the game itself is a just a great and really well designed game. It's also such a fucking cool setting for for playing a role playing game. Uh, so. Yeah. Yeah, it uh, hits on all counts. Now, uh, would you, uh, which of you guys would like to go first? Do you want Tharkul to go first, or do you want Sabaka? I say Tharkul will go first. Tharkul, okay. Tharkul, you're up first. What are you doing? You can hear something definitely is stirring and picking up heavy bits of metal. Yeah. Um... I'm going to try just throwing my hand axe down there to try and draw it this way. So throwing your hand axe down in, sorry, which direction? Like to the right? Like towards this table. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and give us a combat style check. At, yeah. And treat it as plus 10 because that would be short range. Ah, it's not short range, but close enough. Big target. Yeah, he's throwing it down the stairs. Oh, so that's not a great... 51 roll. against your strength. That's like right in the money. 
Oh, that's exactly correct. Yeah, yeah that's Price is right. <laughs> so this thing sinks into there. Shwak. That's one AP. Remember, get your, your three yeah. tokens or whatever the fuck in front of you. Yeah. Uh, so that is one. Uh, do you want to do anything else or you can wait and see what happens? Yeah, I'm waiting to see uh, what result that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Hey, All right. Peering. Very hard peering. Okay. So we're on <laughs> round one. I'm placing initiative tracker dice down. Sabaka, you hear the sound of like... God, it, it feels metal on stone, quite loud, where his axe has uh, chunked into that uh, stone thing at the end. I think I'm going to wait, but I'm just like, what's going on? Like, I thought he was going to come back here. So here's the way it works for the AP is um, <laughs> you can bank one AP to say, I'm going to defend with it. And then that's the only thing you can do with it until it comes around to you in the initial order. You can bank something to say, if X, then Y. And then if it comes around, you can do that. Um, okay. Or I'll, you just... I'll just bank a, if there's a enemy in sight below me, I'll jump down on and attack it. Okay. You got it. Okay. With a, melee, with a melee weapon. Then. And that was ba that was banking one, right? I kind of, that uh, is banking one. Yes. Yeah. So you can so kind of set it aside as if like it's not spent, but it's it's been spoken for. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, it's in really like not to keep just like f showering this thing with praise, but it's another thing I like about it is that like there's clear risk reward stuff for for those types of actions. Other games like it feels like. There isn't quite the same, like, I'm just going to bank it, and then whenever the fuck anyone gets to act, I'm going to go. In this game, it's like, well, no, you're going to bank the thing, but you got to make, uh, you, you you know, if the initiative pass goes around, you lose that, and you can keep waiting, but you're kind of, like, seeing your time, you know, be used up. Yeah. So, what you see, Tharkul, and I think as uh, this is the, Dave's first time seeing these handouts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do I have? Oh, here we go. Uh, need to add a handout for it. Dave. You get a brand new handout. Look at that. Pretty good. Although I am very sorry, I did not give you the same experience that many of the other first-time players had, which is that uh, they got to fight skeevers first. Aww. <laughs> I'll try and pull, uh, like, disease you with skeevers later. I promise. Yeah, I mean, that's that's you know mm. part of this part of this place. Is, it's a real you know, tradition. Fight, yeah, fight some skeevers the first time you walk through the door. <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay, so this would have been after this. Where are we? Who doesn't love giant Nordic rats? Heck yeah! No, they're awesome. They are awesome. Walking Dead. Here we go. Here we go. Oh man, I guess I'm. Yeah. This. Yeah. Steps out to observe nice. the axe. This is still their move, and they haven't spent AP yet. And then they're going to spend... Oh, I don't think... Yeah, you're not hiding. So they're going to look down, and they'll see you. Yeah! That's one, two, three. I'm only going to allow them... Four more. They are starting to move down towards you. Um... They would have each spent one AP to try and inspect that. Uh, so I only have two left. They are going to continue closing in on you. Uh, would you like to spend AP to take an attack of opportunity, Thurkle? Uh, yes, I would. Okay, go right ahead. I'm going to spend one AP to try and block. Uh, you got your shield splitter. I actually failed. Ooh. That's a nice hit. Go ahead and uh, 
Down, there you damage. go. Okay. Nice. So um, I failed mine, which means you have advantage on this. So take a look at the player reference and see if there's anything that strikes your fancy. Yeah. Like you they are pink. wearing armor, so you could uh, try and reduce that. And okay, so that is ten damage. It will get through their armor, so that'll be another five. Oof. Sorry, these are the I have an, I get advantage. Is that what I have? Correct. Yes, you have advantage. Uh, bottom of the first page of that handout. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I will. Yeah, damage their armor. I, I like that. I. It also suits my character a lot. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. You hit their armor. Um, then this one will be able to move in one more, and his last AP will be to try and hit you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Did you want to defend that? Um. Yeah. Probably. Okay. This is my last AP and evade. Okay. Uh, then uh, I. Ooh, I succeed on a six. Ooh. That's a uh, two. Yeah. Um. You want to take the hit or? Uh. Yeah. I can't. I can't beat a six. Okay. So then, uh, you take. Two, um, he did not get advantage. Uh, so actually, two points of damage I don't think gets through your armor. Because uh, you're no. four AR, AR, right? Yeah, yeah, so it swings at you, and it's just your your defense may not have been great, but you succeeded at least, so he doesn't have advantage, which means I can't do slashing damage on you. The second one still has two AP. He is going to step in. And would you like to spend a stamina to get another AP and defend against this? Uh, yeah, I would like to spend a stamina. Okay, then go ahead and uh, evade, I guess, again. Yeah. I succeeded on a five. Damn it. It's all right. It's all right. It's hard for me to beat. <laughs> Yeah. Remember, you just got a tie, though. Okay, so that was a four. If you spend one luck, that makes it a five, and then I fail. Oh, yeah. Let's Ties go to defenders. Okay. So the second one, the first one hits against your armor. The second one looks to be more. Um, I mean, I guess that's the other thing is you could just let it hit, and trust that your armor is going to protect your choice. Oh, that's fair too. Then you keep your luck. What do you think? Yeah, let's do that. I don't have a lot of luck left. Okay. Then let's see. Let's um, see what happens. <laughs> four points of damage from that thing, which does not get through your AR. So it swings at you. <laughs> Another solid hit. That uh, steel plate that you've uh, paid for is certainly making it. Uh, and because you succeeded in your, in your evade, you made it difficult enough so I couldn't get an advantage again. All right, then Lucky. that is them. I've used up all their actions. And then I, we have second wave is coming out. <laughs> These are surely hunters because they are carrying bows. They look down at you. Uh, they draw an arrow and they knock their weapons. That is it for their actions. I'm out of AP for them. They're cool. Have you spent stamina to take it? I in? have spent stamina and all my actions. Okay. Savaka, we're back to your turn. So you lose that first AP, but you can hear the sounds of battle and Tharkul's <laughs> battle cry from down there. You have two yeah. AP left. What would you like to do? And you haven't used any of your movement. Yeah, he's like, oh, crap. He's not coming. <laughs> <laughs> Jumps down. Okay. Uh, um, give us a athletics check uh, or acrobatics at uh, plus 20. Uh, athletics or acrobatics? Yeah, and just subtract 20 from whatever the result is. 
and athletics is strength and acrobatics is agility, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Ooh. To be 67. Mm. And my acro my agility is 54. I fail. <laughs> you want to lock that or just take the. Take yeah, the... I'll use a lock so I can okay. succeed. Or no, I have to roll. Yeah, you have to roll. Yeah, you can't just get... increase the turn of fail yeah. into a success. Uh, there yeah, is burning correct. luck where you reduce your luck stat and that's something. So that definitely works. So you leap out your claws, hit the side, you slide down. Um, that's part of your, that's a narrative. It doesn't, you don't need to spend an action point for that. Okay. So you're down, uh, treat that maybe as difficult terrain. So it'd be two, you have uh, 12 squares of movement left. Okay, so that's 12, that's down to 10. Uh, six. Where is he? <laughs> you can see where those Draugr are. They're engaged with our cool. Oh, okay. There you go. Um... Yeah, if it wasn't for the terrain. I think I'm. I think I might have moved too far. It's gonna go back uh, again. Let's see, it was two. You had twelve from where you landed. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You, where you were there, like at right that uh, spot right there. That's twelve to right okay, there. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. So I, yeah, I'm one square away from being able to attack somebody. Okay, but you have two AP. And you could spend one on dash to move your speed again. Hmm. What are you thinking? You and Tharkul um, will be at the top of the round. Tharkul will actually be at the top of the round. So, you know, if you want to plan to, like, fall back, you can't keep AP across turns, unfortunately. But what you could do is try and fall back. Oh, yeah, you can. What am I fucking talking about? You just don't, you huh? don't get to keep them. At the start of your turn, it refreshes back to three. That's ignore me. I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay. So, um, do you want to try something, or I can tell you neither of them have any AP left. Yeah, so I'll move to here. Okay. Because that's I don't want to move too close, right? Yeah. You can see further down. Yeah, you're right in in their range right now. There are two uh, Draugr archers in that back room. Okay, and what are the guys in front of me fighting with? Sword and board, each. Sword and board? Yeah. Can I try a disarm? You can try, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, one of the downsides of the disarm is it is um, an attack, but they always get to resist special uh, actions. They always get to resist them. What you could try as an alternative is, remember, you can use a special action with advantage. If you hit with an attack, they can't defend, which means you'll get advantage, you could then cash that advantage in and use a special oh, action. Okay, so make the attack first is what you're saying. Uh, you could. I mean, like the if you miss the attack, that means you don't get to do disarm. Because right. you wouldn't get the advantage. But if this would be a way of hitting and then also trying to disarm. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll actually try and get the one that looks... Injured, maybe? Yeah, Tharkul has definitely fucking hit one of them. And he's bashed <laughs> apart, so, like, the our, the chest piece is falling open. He's less armored than what the other one is. Okay, so I will use my superior rapier to attack that one. Go right ahead. Shoo. Lash out. Solid hit. Roll for superior. Six, okay. Um, they are uh, full armored. So you, that would do two points of damage to them after their, no, uh, that would do three points of damage after his armor. Um, and then you have advantage. So you could treat. Could I treat the armor as partial armor or? You're automatically treating it as partial because of your dueling weapon. Oh, and then right. you could spend okay. advantage to treat it as no armor and then add f uh, four damage. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. 
Penetrate armor then? Yeah. Exactly. No, not penetrate armor. It would be the... Oh, pen- yes, yes. Yeah, that's the one. Yep, yep. Treat full armor as partial, partial as armor. Exactly. So that's seven points of damage. Look at this. Okay. And if you wished, you could spend one stamina point to add plus two damage. Interestingly enough, Kev's asked me that, and I'm not sure why. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's do that. Well, look at that. Ah, you throw your all into it, and it's just enough to drop it. Then, uh, Sabaka, you have not spent any uh, stamina to take an extra action. Do you want to do that, or you want to end, uh, end your turn? Kev, I got a question. I, I moved one out of the... I used an action point for a full another move, and I only used one. Yep. Can I move still after my attack? Ooh, good question. I think, let's take a look here. Um, dash. That's a good question. Mm. Or does it just get you into range to you know do your action that you want to use? It, yeah, if this is done on their turn, it's added to your base movement. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, if you use it as a secondary action on your turn, it adds to your movement, which can be split across the, the, the round. Um, if it's used on someone else's turn, you can only move that amount or up to that amount. Okay, so on your own turn, you can like hit and move and... Exactly, so yeah, so you've got uh, another uh, 13 squares you could move. I just need one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then that I'm is hoping. the end of round one, guys. Uh, start of round two, Tharkol, fill your AP. You got three AP. What do you want to do? Hey, I want to. Oh, excuse me. Charge down there, I guess. Okay. Yeah, they have no AP, so they, they couldn't... Uh... Can I, I, I know I have reach with the ax. Um, can I also reach like across this table? How tall is it? Um, or do I need to move around you it? You can, I might give them cover though, because they're- Okay, so I might as well just move to the side then. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting. Uh, this one, is two, funny. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can move one more <laughs> over here. There you go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, attack. Go ahead. Oh yeah, and I, I've got no AP left, so I can't defend. Solid hit. Go ahead and roll for superior. Eight. Yeah. Eight is the best. Okay. Uh, you have advantage. What do you want to spend that on? Uh, now this time they're not wearing armor, or they are still wearing it's, armor. Uh, these ones are wearing armor, just less than the other. Uh, yeah. Um. You could split armor. You could try a special action, like knock that bow out of his hand with a disarm. Um. What I'm gonna do is, oh, I could do a precision strike. Try so on my it. next attack, I choose where I hit. Uh. Well, you could uh, that that you could do this one uh, to choose where you hit. Oh, I see. And you do it on this attack. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'll do. I'll try to. Yeah. What are you trying to hit? Is right in his arm. Then, like, try and try to cut the arm off. Yeah, because yeah. uh, it's a good choice. Because that is a total of thirteen minus three uh, is ten. Uh, see, so hammered in the arm. I need to make a wound check. I fucking failed. One of his arms is gone. So it's like pulling its arm back and it cuts its arm. Do you want the one that was carrying the bow or the one that was carrying the arrow? Uh, the one that was carrying the... Well, whichever... Ah, uh, the bow itself. Yeah, okay. the bow. Yeah, so it's bringing this thing up and then it kind of like finishes bringing the arrow up and it's like... Eh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that uh, it is now um, armless. You have two more AP. Uh, I'll do a second attack on this guy. Okay. Uh, oh. Solid hit. Roll for superior. There we go. Not and damage. with that, it's down. Yeah, I'll reserve one more my AP. last AP. Yeah, I'll reserve it. Okay. Sabaka, 
Tharkul has gone running down. You can hear him shouting from the next chamber. Yeah, I think he's going to... He was totally surprised. He thought we were going to pull back and retreat, and he's like, he charged forward. Yeah. He's like, we'll definitely need to talk about our strategies later. <laughs> um, so I, I've totally forgot. I'm a, this character is a two-weapon fighter? Is that how it's supposed no, to be? No, no, he, he has a variety of weapons because um, sometimes like you're fighting at different lengths. Uh, it, it, like, oh, right. Yeah, like w- one of the ways that it really... Um, you know, uh, I, I think can be beneficial. There is a kit like uh, Ingolf played a dual wielding Khajiit warrior on uh, at our Daggerfall session. This guy I built differently, but even though you don't have multiple attacks, like if you're facing a guy like this um, and you can get in, getting in and attacking at one meter with your short sword and banking an AP can be helpful because though you'll draw an attack of opportunity from you when they try and move back to two meters. Because so, he's using the two meter weapon. Yeah, yeah. The sword is a two meter weapon. Oh, okay. Yeah, your rapier is a two meter weapon. Your short sword is a one meter. Oh, that's yeah. That totally makes sense now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I use an AP to swap weapons, or do it? I uh, use one to draw one more weapon. Okay, so one to draw. I'm a assuming weapon. you put at some point your crossbow like strapped across your back. You got your yeah, rapier one in that... short sword yeah, out. I was hoping to jump somebody with a rapier, but yeah. So you got your um, short okay. sword out, and you have two more AP. Uh, do you want to take an action before the dragger goes? Yeah, I'm going to stab this dragger with my short sword. Okay. So you step in within range. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, that's, that's close. Um, my agility is 54. Yeah, you're good. That's a hit. Go ahead and roll for superior. Okay, now you have advantage, so decide what you'd like to spend advantage on. Four will be stopped by its armor, but it's full down to partial because of your dueling weapon. If you want to spend that advantage down to... Uh, to Trade armor again? Exactly. The same thing, like, look for a vulnerable spot. You get to add your strength bonus. Um, you know what? Actually, no, I'm going to... Uh, apply damage one quality to armor hit lo- location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. Okay. That's one of the things they changed from the in the new playtest. I love it because you can use any weapon to try and chip away at the armor. Okay. Yeah, I think he saw Tharkul do that a couple of times. He's like, oh, that's a brilliant strategy. I'm going to try that. All right, so t- one or two straps on this thing. Even though it doesn't get through the armor, you've cut away some things so they're falling loose. You still have one more AP, I think. Yes. Do you want to um, keep it or you want to... I will keep it. Oh, wait, but I I get one counterattack doesn't cost any AP, correct? Yeah. No, one doesn't count towards the total of, of attacks. attacks. Exactly. So I still need an AP to counterattack? You still need an AP to counterattack. And if you're successful in a counterattack or... Um, how does it, it doesn't here? count towards my number of attacks. Yeah, okay. So I will actually save this AP okay. in order to defend you got it yeah and there's all sorts of fun things you could also fucking attack of opportunity him as he goes away attacks of opportunity count towards your two attack limit as well yeah all right then it is the dragger's turn all right so i got three ap i can start setting some of these aside because you guys are killing the monsters um so the first thing he's going to do is i'm going to spend a point to disengage so i can move back without drawing an attack of opportunity. Uh, Then it is going to swing that iron sword at you. Uh, Would you like to defend? Yes. Now, would you like to defend by parrying, evading, or counterattacking? The counterattack? Yeah, I think. Counterattack? Okay. Yeah, this one doesn't count towards your AP, your attack limit. So then your last AP, uh, then it's contested roll. Make your um, combat style check. And because you are the only one here, I think you get plus one to your um, 
plus to one to your success level because of your your dueling, whether you succeed or fail, and oh, uh, plus two. Yes, you're getting two levels, uh, two bonus success levels. So when if you succeed, when you're comparing the success level, add two to the result, Dave. Uh, I got a, I got a two. Uh, I got a twenty-five, so that's a two plus two, so four. Four. Okay. So you don't get um, uh, a what do you call it? Oh wait, that was a counterattack, right? Yeah. Okay, so if counterattacks if counterattacks tie, then you don't get uh, then it, it just like the blades clash and no one takes damage. You could spend one AP to make that one more and hit, or no one AP one uh, luck. But I've got two. I've got a, a bonus degree of success. Is that not? Like oh yeah, you already beat point? me. What am I talking about? Hold on, I'm fucking cheating. Yeah. Yes, yes. So you did hit. Points. I don't know why I was thinking it was tied. Yeah, so you, you did hit. Points. Go That's ahead okay, and roll yeah. uh, superior. See if you do more damage. Okay, six. Awesome. I was thinking of um, advantage. So you don't have advantage on this, but it's six points of damage, and you did weaken that armor. So look at this. Wow. Now he has one more AP. Um, I think he's going to swing at you again. Do you wish to... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Did you get... How do you get... Oh, it's when I fail. That's when you get your AP back, right? You succeed and I fail on a defense? Uh, yes. Okay. Would you like to spend a point of stamina, get another AP, and defend? I think you're out of AP, right? Yep. Oh, I see that stamina. one down. Yes, okay. So, <laughs> and is it the same thing? Do you wish to counterattack? Yep. Okay. Um, I, woo, I succeed on a six. Oh, wow. Yeah. But, oh, okay. You know, that's, that's okay. I'm a 54 agility, so that's a success. Oh, nice. And it's a seven. Roll, it's a nine degree success. Seven. <laughs> Fucking awesome. Go ahead and roll superior. Three. Okay, so unfortunately. Fortunately, I succeeded as well. So you don't get advantage. <clears throat> Cuts across his armor. Ping. No, no, it doesn't because of your. Uh, no, because it's still full armor. It's not partial. You're just reducing the, the 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 defense. All right. So yeah, you are keeping this guy at bay. Then the other Tharkul. He's got that bow ready. Would you like to defend against this? You could evade. You have to spend... Wait, you got one AP left, don't you? Uh, I do have one AP left, yes. Yeah, yeah. You want to defend against this? Yeah, I'm going to defend. Uh, oh, I failed. Oh. Oh, I failed as well. Is that better than your agility? No, no. my agility's a 34. Shit. Okay. Um, you want to lock that? You got two points of luck left. Or take a hit. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's lock. Okay. Because if you can, if you can get a success of this, you could impose minus ten on my next attack. Oh. Shit. Okay. Yeah. Um. So we both failed. Uh, so I fired an inch. It shatters against the wall. Spends one AP to reload, and he's going to shoot at you again. Do you want to spend a stamina point? To take another action. Uh, what do I have left? Three now? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. Go to two. Okay. So go ahead. Uh, I got a three on my success. Oh, gross. Mm. Just the bad rolls all of a sudden. Okay. Uh, then uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, that is um... oh, so I have advantage. I can reduce your armor. So that is eight points of damage uh, and reduce it by four for your armor. I take four. Yeah. Okay. And that is it for their AP. Tharkul, you've got no AP left? No. Uh, and I've already spent <laughs> your stamina. Sabaka, yeah. you got any AP left? Okay, neither does your opponent. 
All right, so we're top of round three. Tharkul, you have three AP left. Fill up your tokens. What would you like to do with them? Uh, take a step forward and slice this guy. Go right ahead. I cannot defend. That is a hit. Roll for superior. Seven. Seven. All right, so that is 12 minus uh, three is nine. All right, solid hit. Boom. You also have advantage. You want to do anything with that? Plus 10 to your next attack or um, apply damage quality to the armor again? Yeah, I, I, I really like that one. <laughs> Smash. I only have two AR now. Um, you have two more AP. Anything you want to do with those? Um, yeah, I'll let me do a second attack. I think if I can take them out, okay. I'll be yep. improved. Uh, Superior, eight okay, so damage. eight. All right, I think that might cause a wound. Uh, eight plus five is 13 minus two is 11. That's actually enough to fucking kill it. What's it look like as you take this one down and two solid sweeps? Yeah, just like, you know, this ax has just got such an arc to it. It's, you know, the power of Tharkul's shoulders are just on display as yeah. he's sort of like, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you can hear it almost he... wields it like a range weapon in some ways. <laughs> yeah, you really. All right. Uh, do you wish to move at all? You still could move uh, before your turn ends if you like. Because uh... you've only moved one square. You have. Yeah, uh, I will. Yeah, more. I'll move up to here. Okay. So if I can see. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then it is uh, Sabaka. Uh, you got three AP again. What would you like to do with them? Um, he's going to move to here and attack with a short sword. Yep. Okay. I can't defend. That is a hit, and uh, you've got advantage. Uh, do you want to reduce that to? No, uh, unarmored, or do you want to do something else with it? Yeah, I'll reduce it to unarmored. Okay, so you did damage already. It's only three, which means that is, look at this. Oh! Two more AP. Huh. And I think like, thir no, uh, 12 more squares you can move. Yeah, I think I'm gonna sh shank it one more time. Okay. It's like stabby stabby. Nope. Okay, so 71. Uh, you want to luck that? Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, Running low on luck and stamina. Uh, if you roll a crit, incidentally, a critical hit, which is like a one to four on the D100, uh, you get a point of luck back. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Cool. Mm hmm. So uh, then, what if you roll a one on damage? Do you get it? No, I'm <laughs> no. <laughs> we do that all the time. That could be awesome. <laughs> all right, so you've um, hit this I think thing. It's cool. Run two or six. Can I jump over this thing? Yeah. Count it as difficult terrain, just kind of uh, two squares. 12, 13, 14. He's like, hey, there's one more left. Where are you going? Okay. Are you saving that last AP? Yeah. Okay. Then on this thing's turn, oh, I'll get rid of the archers because they're all dead. Um, this thing <laughs> turns towards you. Um, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, oh, and that's actually all I need to do to try and attack Sabaka. Uh, all right, so Sabaka, uh, I am going to attack you with a longsword. You want to defend? Counterattack. Counterattack. You got it. All right, uh, I got. Uh, I failed actually. Nice. It's Seven. A wow. Go ahead and roll for superior, and you have advantage as well. Oh, sweet. Six. Um, what do you want to do with that? Penetrating armor. Reduces armor to. 
to Hello. unarmored. All right, so that is, look at this. Whoa! Our huge hit on him. And that doesn't count towards your total of a, oh, you couldn't have counterattacked because you've already made two attacks. Points. Oh no, but, but the my, first yeah, first counterattack doesn't count. Ignore me. I'm an yeah, idiot. Yeah, my first counterattack doesn't count towards my attacks. And uh doesn't your thing trigger? Uh cuz I failed my attack. Uh once per round, if no other characters are within melee range of your opponent, which is case, if you defend, if your defensive reaction is successful and I fail, you immediately regain 1 AP. So you have 1 AP left. Uh you, I'm going to attack again. <laughs> Would you like to defend with that new AP? Uh, yeah, but I can't counterattack again because I've attacked twice and my first counterattack doesn't count, but I can't counterattack third time. Correct. Or counterattack third time, right? Yeah. So, um, you could I parry or you could evade. Parry, parry or parry evade. Is yeah. Parry is probably the better option with your weapons. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I failed again. Okay, doesn't matter then. Oh, we both failed. All right, so uh, both swing wildly. Oh no, I, I didn't. No, I didn't roll anything. What am I pushing for parry? Uh, oh, for a combat style. Okay, so just hit the combat style by itself. Yeah, that way we know it's a parry as opposed to a counter attack. Okay. Okay. I failed as well. You failed as well. Yeah. Okay, uh, so here's the only reason why you might want to lock that to try and make that a success would be to get uh, the advantage and then do a special action like trying to disarm or knock him down or something like that. Sure. Okay, nice. So lock it, go ahead and roll. You just need a success in your combat style. I need a one to four to get my luck back. That's what I need. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice. I, I don't think we've seen that happen yet because I for I. Oh, okay, so seven. It wasn't working. I accidentally hit it twice. But That's okay. So I think both those are. What's yeah. your what's your the first you one's first one's a success. Fantastic. What would you like to do with your advantage? Um, I think I will. Uh... It's like if you choose to, just as an example. If you want damage to use, armor further. Uh, say again. A damage his armor further. Uh, Does that make it easier to finish it off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I mean, damage armor would be another. The, it's not attack only. So yeah, his uh, there'd be uh, oh, two out of two AP then, two AR. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Sabaka, you you sort of like force it to overextend, and its its armor falls more apart. That is it for its <laughs> actions. I've got one AP left for that one. Um, I should have all out attacked. And then, end of the round. Uh, Tharkul, do you have any AP left? Uh, I do have one left. Anything you'd like to do with that? I've attacked twice and I've moved my full move, so mm. I don't know if there's really anything tactically advantageous right now. Okay. So, and no. No, okay, then we're on to round three. Third cool. Get your three AP back. What would you like to do? Yeah. Step forward and cut him down. <laughs> okay, right oh, ahead. I've been whittling the armor down for you. Okay, so, oh, be... I, I can oh. hold on. I, I can block. I can block here. Uh, nope, not with that roll. <laughs> so uh, that is a hit and 12 damage. Yeah, so what's it look like as you take this one down? <laughs> just uh you know uh sorry what's your character's name again oh sabaka is like there's one left i'm like oh is there and it just turns around and the guy comes running after them and he just pops <laughs> him down yeah all right so with the last one down what happens next we'll loot the bodies you will definitely loot the bodies and, and check out the room Let's see here. Let's let's have some fun with the looting of Draugr. Guys, would you each give us a 2d8 roll, please? 2d8. Okay. Oh, oops. Sorry. Bad typing. Okay. All right. So, um, 
Let's see here. Jeff, give us a 4d10 roll and a 5d10 roll, please. And Dave, give us a 5d10 roll and a 10d10 roll, please. Four, five. Okay. So, Jeff, it's actually not on them. You have to go. There is a crypt set into the alcove of the wall. Mm. What you find in there are 18 drakes worth of cracked gems and goblets, as well as uh, 23 drakes worth of silverware. These things were set to rest, not with a king's ransom, but definitely with what probably the best their families had to offer. Sabaka, you find in yours 32 drakes worth of silverware and ooh, 71 drakes worth of stolen jewelry. Those alcoves had some good stuff in them. All right. There was a gems in a chest and stuff in the previous room. I think we should go back to those as well. We passed by it on after we went to, through that porticolis. Hmm. Yes. In case that's a thing you're interested in. If not, I can go back and look at it. There's a little Do twinkle hurt. in the uh, Khajiit's eye <laughs> when he says that. Would you give us a David D8 rule, please? Sure. Uh, as soon as my character sheet stops glitching on me. Oh, sorry. Come on, big money. Mm, okay. What you find on the table uh, is, hold on, 66 zero drakes worth of jewelry and gems spread across there. So another 60 drakes worth of treasure and then some junk that seems to be spread across there. The chest, however, the chest will require, well, I guess one of two things. First, do you wish to inspect the chest for traps? I would. Would you give us but... a subterfuge roll and you're gonna compare that to your uh, perception? I'll give you a plus 10 on this, so subtract 10 from the roll before you compare. Mm -hmm. How does 48 compare to your, per your perception? P PRC is perception? Uh, yes, PRS is personality. Okay, yeah, perception is 47. Oof. So you can't conclusively say one way or the other whether there are traps in this. I think there's no traps. <laughs> <laughs> we'll unlock the chest. Okay, so you get your thieves' tools out. Give us a subterfuge check at plus 10. This will be to your agility. Uh, my agility is 54. That pops it open, no difficulty. Actually, you know, I think it might be... Uh, I can see how you can make an argument for intelligence instead of agility as well. Something I really, Another thing I like about the game is that you can kind of use what skill or what uh, stat kind of makes sense for the moment. Uh, Would you like half of the treasure and jewelry we found on the table? I gotta grab one more book. They're cool. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> we found there was 60 drakes worth of jewelry and 60 drakes worth of treasure. You want to just write one of those on your sheet? Sure. Uh, okay. How do you want to search, or do we just want to total all this up? And how do you want to do this? You guys could put, we have a tr uh, treasure handout, a loot handout. You could put it in just as your stuff. Carl started it up. Oh, and it looks like folks have been adding to it too. So, <laughs> I like to just—I just like to put things on my 
character sheet. Yeah, okay. your call. If you want to add it to the common uh, share, or if you want to keep it on your character sheet or between your characters, I am fine either way. What now, do you want to do, Jeff? Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with whatever. I, I don't know. What do you think? Spread the wealth? Put it in the... Yeah, that's fine. We can compare I'm to just... the loot. See what's in there first. See if it's worth... Uh, currently, there are about. <laughs> oh yeah, there's also Draugr tongues, right? Not, neither of you guys are spellcasters, so you're not gonna or alchemists, so you're, that doesn't matter. But you can harvest. Like there's rules in it, Dave, for harvesting from almost everything you can fight. Yeah. Uh, and oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So like har harvesting the Draugr for bone meal and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there, oh, yeah, you guys have found more, more drakes than, uh, any of the others. So your call. I will not judge you, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, so yeah, cause, um, there was 120 drakes worth of jewelry and treasure on that table. And I found 103 um, on the creatures that we I, we killed. And then you found how much? Uh, 18 and 23? Yeah, 18, 23. So 41? Yeah, 41 drinks. Yeah, so we're like, we're doing pretty good here. <laughs> Let's see what's in this chest and we'll... Okay. Would you give us a D100 roll, please? I wanted to get the more lucrative loot. Oh, that's either really good or really bad. Uh, finally, it's open. <laughs> and it is empty. Hmm. Interesting. But on the upside, it wasn't trapped, though. <laughs> so that's that is good. true. <laughs> What would you guys like okay. to do next? Here, I'm just, uh, my character hands you 60 drakes worth of treasure that was on the table. Write it on your sheet. Okay, so I got 101 total. Nice. I have other stuff from other times as well. Let's carry on. I'm enjoying this. To give you a sense <laughs> of, of what the cost would be, so let, let, let's say you want to buy a um, a, a steel greatsword, for instance, is 300, uh, 300 drakes. If you wanted to get a adamantium one that gives plus three, uh, to damage, that would be, um, what is that, 2,400. So Which to give you an idea of how much the, there's lots of things to spend your money on uh, for healing potions and magic and... Cool. Yeah, yeah. It's Fair one. enough. Okay, so... Where would you guys like to go? Now, it is quite dark down that corridor. Tharkul, it does have uh, torches on him still. Remember, that is uh, five, I think it's five meters of bright, five meters of dim, if you would like to illuminate, but it does uh, require one hand. Yeah. Um, I'll just, why don't you, I have definitely not been this far. Why don't you lead? Okay. Um, Sabaka, and we will go stealthily. So as you step forward, you can hear from behind you, Tharkul. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> from behind us? Yeah. There is no one there. You're, you're not missing no, anything. No, no, no. He... <laughs> Ibaka, like, looks around the room. He's like, did we miss one? Uh, 
Nothing you can don't see. Don't believe we have missed them. And now it's just the sound of that burning <laughs> braze here. Okay. Um. It, what is there? Is there a trap finding mechanic for in this game for? Uh yeah. I mean, basically, I'll just make a roll for you. Okay. To keep it, I don't think there is a secret roll. To be honest, I can't remember. Let's take a look at uh, subterfuge. Um, because mm, 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 that is not a bad thing to be mindful of in these caves. Well, and that's where, like, Sabaka's like, if you haven't been further than this, then we don't know if anyone else has either. We should be wary of where we step, kind of thing. Yep. Okay, here we go. Subterfuge. Um... Observe, I think, is what's used for it. Okay. Yeah, uh, noticing a hidden switch or trap in a room, that is observe, using uh, perception. Observe. So are you going to roll that, Kev? Uh, no, no, you go ahead and roll, because that, that way you can... Uh, you don't need luck right now, but you could maybe get some luck if you got a, a crit. How does that compare to your perception? Perception I is 40, character 40, shoot off. Sorry? 47. 47. My perception is 47. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So as far as you could tell, nothing down there. All right. Let's just move cautiously. Two, four, six. So you're stumbling along in the dark here. Tharkul is just going down. And Sabaka stopped right there. There's a pressure plate right between these two that would trigger if you move on either of them. Mm. Uh, so it's one square ahead of me or two squares ahead of me? Uh, if you step on either of those squares, it'll trigger it. Yeah. You could just hop over it or leap over it if you'd like. Just give us a um, athletics or acrobatics at plus 40. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with acrobatics. It would be sub uh, subterfuge to try and disarm it if that's what you want to do. Oh! Plus 40? Oh, thank God. Oh, yeah, yeah. 34. Yeah. 35. Okay. So you are safely leap over to here. Oh. Tharkul is still then, in darkness, though. He cannot see. You, you would be able to see. He's got his hand out, you know, stumbling um, along, eyes wide. I'm going to watch for him to come around the corner, and I'll tell him to stop at, like, when he gets like, right around the corner. Okay, so you feel your way up to here, Tharkul. Yeah. It feels like you're turning and going down further. He's like, stop. There's a trap ahead of you. What? What, what sort of trap? It's the kind that dangerous to step on. Oh, okay. You got four oh. degrees of success on your observe, though. So uh, there, there will be a blade that would come down. A blade from the ceiling will attack you if you step on the plates. Uh, you can try to jump over them, but it's downwards. It's kind of dangerous. Uh, okay. Uh, well, I will light my torch now. Okay. I will put my axe away and light my torch to uh, see this. You can just keep your axe in one hand. Like, you need two hands to wield the the great axe, but you can carry it in one. Right. Okay, it, fair. Just, yeah, yeah. Yeah, drop the torch, use one action to ready it, and then you're, you know, off to the races. Okay, so he points out it's these steps at the bottom here. Yeah, let me give you your light here and make it creepy dim after a distance there you go do you have torch light now Tharkul? yes and where and you now at point where the plate is yeah he'll point with his rapier yeah or with his short sword he's short sword oh shit, i just moved you onto there sorry i meant to, <laughs> point to <laughs> i did the yeah. opposite of what we normally do instead of actually <laughs> trying to move you with a uh, arrow I, I tried to point with your token where where i place sabaka that would be where the the 
trap is, right? In Okay, in, yeah. So I will attempt to jump. Yep, so give us uh, athletics or acrobatics at plus 40. I'm going to put my weapon away so I can try and catch him if he goes flying into the wall. Okay. Um, athletics. And athletics is strength, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm much better at that. Oh my good lord. But you rolled a, f uh, that's with a uh, minus 40. Oh, so I got a 40. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah. that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. So you leap over. Well done. And you could continue. see, Tharkul, this is maybe not, uh, Sabak wouldn't notice it, but there is light in this room up ahead here. Mm -hmm. Coming from, there must be another brazier burning down there. Okay. I'm going to pull up my crossbow and load it. It's loaded. Around the corner. Now, there does seem to be an Cut awful webs. lot of webs in here. There's cobwebs ahead. Large I will one. use my torch to burn them out of my face. Okay. That's a great idea. Right. I'm going to draw my rapier in my offhand. Oh, yeah, and there is light coming from that room up ahead. They're cool as well. You got your rapier out. So you got your rapier in one hand, the loaded crossbow in the other. Yep. Okay. And I'm going to save my game. <laughs> <laughs> Good to call. a new file. To a new file. Yeah. Just in case. Just... Yeah. Jeff and I played a um, Eclipse Phase game that did have a, a, a quasi save mechanic in it. Uh, because God. of the nature of the thing. Remember when you were making your character as we were jumping back and forth in all the different worlds? Oh, yeah. I kind of like that game, actually. It's a... Yeah. We should, I, I think it's been long enough I could reuse basically the same idea. No one would remember it at this point because it's like no. eight years. Yeah. That was a, a lot of fun. Okay, so mm -hmm. um, what do you guys wish to do next? It does appear that there is a much bigger chamber up ahead. Oh, man. It is nerve-wracking. <laughs> I will move to here. Okay. Would you give us a stealth check to Sabaka? <laughs> I'm just about to move my token again. I'm like... Uh... Okay. Oh, lots of stumbled on some rocks. Okay. So the only thing that I would probably introduce as a house rule um, is uh, contested rules uh, where both parties fail. I probably mm. use the Warhammer Fantasy for, for skill checks, at least, not necessarily for combat. Combat already has clear rules for that. But for uh, skill things, I'd probably use the Warhammer Fantasy rule of whoever has the greater degree of success, which includes fails right mm. so because I, I just really like that there is a clear outcome for one of these things i don't like the idea of having to figure out mm. okay you satisfied oh you got no luck so what do i make here last half hour at both of you get to get another point of luck i'm gonna spend it on a reroll. <laughs> <laughs> Go right Bam. ahead. Goodbye. Goodbye, luck. There you go. 41. All right. So then. Yeah. There's a whole lot of spider webs in here, hey? Disgusting. What do you do? You could also take a moment to try and observe or listen if you like. Uh, yeah. Um, so it's observe? Uh, observe yeah. against uh, perception, PRC. Oh. Looks 
clear. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a lot of wind. It, it is really a big area. And, uh... Are you coming? Give us a survival check, Sabaka. Mm -hmm. I don't think... I can't remember if you're trained in that or not, but... I don't think he is. Oh, okay. Hmm. So, Tharkul, would you like to give us a survival check? Yes, I would like to. <laughs> you sound like you would. Oh, I'll use a lock. Yeah, okay. Dang it. Jeez. That was not lucky at all. My luck has not helped me that much. <laughs> <laughs> You've been out those are some uh, difficult rolls. All right, oh, so you yeah. guys move forward. This room feels much bigger than the others, and it's actually fairly cold. Interesting. What kind of game would Kev would play for the undead and giant spiders? He wouldn't put them both in the same night, would he? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, if I was oh. really leaning into it, you'd say someone's like, help me! <laughs> <laughs> and he's over here in the corner. Exactly. <laughs> right, right, here, right here in the doorway, actually. Yeah, exactly. It's good. Oh. Fucking murder him right away <laughs> just to save yourself the trouble. I've tried to murder him. It just doesn't work. You I know. Yeah. yeah. I'm but free. As soon as he drops. Yeah. As soon as he drops. Exactly. <laughs> whack, whack, whack. There's an NPC who's a right son of a bitch in the game, Jeff. <laughs> and he's yapping at you the whole time. You're fighting this giant spider. Oh, yeah. It, which is like exactly the kind of NPC you want to then like fucking murder afterwards because he's such a yappy prick. He's like, I got the thing and I'm not going to give it to you. You got to free me first. And I'm like, no, give it to me. Mm. He's like, no. He's like, fuck. So okay. what would you guys like to do? This definitely gonna... has, you need not make any kind of lore check or whatnot. This has all the markings of a spider's lair. And remember, the spiders come quite big in Skyrim. I mean, in Tamriel in general, but... Yeah. Thorkul, I'm assuming you're burning all the webs that you come along here. I Yeah, I have been, and I think I would continue to. So, Sabaka, you get to there. Oh, Tharkul, are you being sneaky as well? Uh, I am attempting to, but I know I'm carrying a torch, so... I'm trying to let uh, oh, yeah, so could go a little bit ahead. But yeah. Give us a stealth check and I'll apply it only to the sound. Yeah, only to the sound I'm making. Oh, there's a one. Uh, oh, that's an 11. 11. Oh, so close. All right. So you're being quiet. Um, and then... Sabaka has turfed his <laughs> observe roll. Would you like to give us an observe roll as well? Yeah, I guess I <laughs> Yeah. Observe. Oh, that's oh, against perception, right? I'm literally one oh. off. Do you want to... Oh, my goodness. Do you want to luck that, or... <sighs> Roll 20, you that know what? Is so I, I, I will tell you, you probably would get a plus 10 on this because it is a quite loud thing you're hearing. So that wouldn't oh. help with uh, Sabaka's 88. <laughs> you can hear from echoing down the corridor a kind of. <laughs> and the sound of <laughs> something is coming in this direction. I think you're aware that it doesn't sound like a spider. No, it does not. That I'm certain of. You can likely see, Sabaka doesn't seem to have heard that, and uh, he's making his way through, crossbow in one hand, rapier in the other, deeper into the corridor. Whatever is there, what can you see right now, Tharkul? Like, you're not sure where in that fucking corridor. Is. Oh yeah, you can't see the full... Uh, All I see is like the webs and rocks and it's coming from to the to the yeah to the side there. You would have to this way like east. Yeah. 
Yeah, and even further so, down, if you take, I think you'll probably see it if you step one more to the south uh, east. Okay. I see Sabaka. Yeah, you see Sabaka, but you can't quite see ahead. No. Sabaka, unfortunately. Oh, yes, first of all, Thorko, are you saying or doing anything? You have like a six second kind of window here. Uh, yeah, just, you know, the whole like really quick. There's something ahead. Sabaka, you want to give us a second uh, observe? Uh, re roll your observe check. We'll treat it as plus 10 as well. The sound I made, you hear it as well in time. Something is coming forward and you can hear it coming from, you see what you can see up here? It's down there. From the hallway ahead. You can see Tharkul's torch does not reach us that, that far. He would not be able to see what, what you're talking about. Yeah. So what do you say? Um, there's a hallway at the end of the room. And I think he'd go back towards Tharkul. Yeah. And says, hand me the torch. Okay, I'll, I'll hand you the torch. Okay, let me do this here. Are you, gonna, are you planning on tossing it somewhere? Yeah, he's going to toss it between these rocks here when he sees something coming. Yeah, awesome. Uh, let me... Um... I love the lighting feature on uh, Roll20 now. Be able to place lighting, it's so fucking cool. I just thought you'd want to drop one of those little torches there. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Okay. Makes me happy. So yeah, he's doing that as soon as he sees uh, so, something coming down the hallway. Yeah, yeah. So you let me show you what is coming down the hallway. And they're cool. Let's see. Yeah, perfect. Staggering into view. A drugger lord. No, Something I mean much worse. Bigger. Oh. Let me show you. Uh oh. Have been slower through the room, Jeff. <laughs> tune in, tune in next time, for whoever shows up to play, to roll an issue. There we go. Whoa, the hell is that? A troll. They have a barrow troll. Comes lumbering down. So guys, would you each kindly roll initiative? And I will do so for the troll. Ooh, I rolled terrible. And both of you, I'm assuming, are still currently hiding. And I'm assuming you took a moment, Tharkul, to get both your hands on your axe. So you don't need yeah, to waste no. an AP for that. Yeah. Okay. Remember I mentioned that some creatures would have stamina like you guys do? A boss creature like a troll might. So... Guys, uh, uh, I am so slow. <laughs> Sabaka, this thing seems to be staggering down. I'll put him right at oh, the oops, precipice of entering the room here. <laughs> this thing is lumbering through here. It has the coloring of a, a Skyrim troll as well, not the kind of like f uh, um, light color of uh, the illustration. It's got that white, you know, and the bluish gray skin and the distinctive three eyes. But it stands, as you can see, almost nine to ten feet tall. Hey. Sabaka, you have three AP. What would you like to do? It's going to move. One, two, four, five. And then shoot 
with the crossbow. Fuck. I cannot defend. I'll, I'll better say, because you guys are hidden, I cannot defend against this attack, so go ahead. Make your shot. Fuck. Solid hit. Roll for superior. Is the crossbow superior? Uh, yeah, yeah, crossbow superior as well. Okay. You spared no expense. Uh, nine, nice. And uh, I'm gonna assume it's a bodkin one as well, so it's gonna punch through. That's an additional four points of damage. 13, all right, so uh, look at this. It is quite tough though. <laughs> Thunk into the troll, that is one. You have two more actions. Um, is there a way oh, to- Oh, you have advantage too. Anything you wanna do with that? Oh yeah. Can't damage his um, armor because it's just uh, yeah, nothing but troll, pure troll. Um, is there a way to like um? Anger it or oh, I guess shooting with a crossbow probably does that. <laughs> <laughs> you probably have that base covered. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I can use. Uh, that, no. so I will point out the advantage that grants a plus ten to the next melee against the target. That doesn't. It's not linked to you necessarily. Oh, that can be used by other people. Uh huh. Hell yeah, we'll press advantage, attack only. Okay, so next melee attack against the troll gets plus 10. Okay, so I move five. Ooh. Yep. And I'm going to... You may have figured this out already, but the reload rating of your crossbow tells you how many AP you need to spend to reload it. So like your reload for the crossbow is two. Six. Okay, I'm <laughs> going to the back of the room here. Okay. And... Uh, Do you want to spend any more AP or are you going to... No, I'm going to save those. <laughs> okay, yep. So then, they're cool. You have three AP. And there is a troll in here. Yeah. Oh my god. In this game... You can split your movement up, correct? Yep. Yeah. Uh, but it's probably really fast. Uh, its reach, incidentally, is two meters. Yeah. So, I mean, I have a slight reach advantage, but... Um... I mean... <laughs> I'm gonna move up a bit, but not... I'm not going to advance all the way to it, and I'm going to... Because I'm going to wait and hopefully get an attack. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to move half my movement to closer. Uh, you need not make a roll. You guys would know trolls are vulnerable to fire, by the vibe. Yeah, I kind of thought that, but I don't okay. really have anything right now. All right. I kind of threw that into the middle of the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All Damn. right. Then it is um troll oh uh are you is the is the ready to action that you're going to attack of opportunity if it comes into range? Yeah, exactly that. Okay. If it if it comes close enough that I can yep. Yeah. Okay. So it's speed. Man, this thing's fast. Oh my goodness. It's going to clamor. So yeah. When it sees you come into the light, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six. Uh, so now when it moves there, you... And you make my attack? Yeah, if I move the Oh, what the fuck's going on here? One. Oh, there we go. So now you can make an attack of opportunity because it's moving out of the... Thing and you got plus ten on this attack as well. Okay. Oh, I, I could, uh, I can uh, defend too. Uh, is it? No, it wants to fucking hit you. Uh, so that is a solid hit. 
uh, for 35, so it's 12 damage. It is unarmored. Oh, yeah, that doesn't matter. Um, yeah, your attack will get through the armor, so that'll do 17, 13 damage. Look at this. It still doesn't wound it, unfortunately. Um, because it didn't defend, you do have advantage. Anything you wish to do? Um, let me just quickly, really quickly look again. What were the types of uh, actions you take? Yeah, the special oh, actions. Yeah. Special no. actions are actually on the handout as well. Uh, uh, they are special actions include. Oh, there. Yeah. Bash. Arise, bash. Uh, disarm. Blind opponent. Uh, faint. Oh. Uh, which is that it wouldn't get an attack, uh, defense against your next attack, uh, trip, uh, or force movement. If one moves self and opponent three meters in either direction, both must be in the same direction. What bash lets you do is, uh, if you, you make an attack, you would knock it one meter back. Um, it loses one AP. And it has to make a acrobatics check to avoid falling prone. Okay. I'll we keep reading those. So that of those, the reason bash might be useful, your attack property triggered as it went in. If you bash this thing and you're successful, you push it back, it would trigger another attack opportunity as it comes in again. Yeah, I, it does make the most sense of what uh, I could do. Okay. I think, yeah. So this is, uh, Unarmed so, is one of your, um, one of, is part of your combat style. So you can make a combat style test against its uh, combat. So go ahead. Okay. So I got one degree of success. Oh, so use combat style instead of athletics. Exactly. Well, I mean, yeah. you're better at that. You, you could, in theory, use athletics if you wanted, but right. you're... Ooh. I have one luck left. What do you think? I rolled a one for my degrees of success. Yeah, I'm going to try. Okay. Last luck. Come on. Uh, uh, nice. Yes. All right. <laughs> so this thing tries to come in. It clambers over those rocks and tries to jump down, and you just went, yeah, and hammered it back. It staggers back. It loses one AP. And then I'm going to try and come in again. Uh, so if you'd like to spend another AP, yes. this will be your second if, attack. If one, the opponent is knocked back one meter, loses one AP, and tests acrobatics. Oh, to yeah, i to make an acrobatics check. Hold on. Uh, that is physical. Oh. Here we go. Oh, wait, but target cannot be a larger size. Oh, oh! So yeah, it is. Oh, ah. so I couldn't have even done that. Yeah. I mean, you could have forced a movement, which would have pushed it back one and you back. Oh, it back up to three and you back up to three. Unless. Yeah, but you both well, have to move in the yeah, same we have direction. Yeah, go in the same direction. Yeah. So do you not? So no. uh, let me ask: Would you like to trip then? Can you trip yeah. against the same? Target cannot be larger. It's the exact same test we just had. Oh, cannot be larger. Shit. Yeah, they just they really they if you're if they're larger, it is difficult to get anything so off against them. So then, what about faint? Faint would I, have set up same test you would have just made uh, on a success. Your next melee attack against it, um, it, you it doesn't get to defend. That's good. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I might as well because I can't, I couldn't have done the other one. So, yeah. okay. So then it moved to there. Um, so I wouldn't have lost the action. Now I'm spending one action. Uh, I'm gonna try and hit you. Okay. Would you like to defend? Uh, yeah, I'll use my last AP to evade. Okay. We go. Uh, you get your luck point back because you did spend a luck to reroll that combat style. Oh, uh, so you do which I will immediately use. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. All right, I uh, oh. hold on, hold on, before you decide, I I failed oh. my attack. Oh, yeah. Okay, right. So neither. Okay, so that was my first one. Um, I am gonna attack again. Um, so would you like to defend against this? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll spend stamina. No, no, you still have one AP left. Because all you've done so far is uh, uh, attack of opportunity. Oh, one attack. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. Right. Because I didn't use that other one. Yeah. Okay. So right. then oh. if you're doing, go ahead, make your evade. I roll. I succeeded with zero degrees of success. Oh. <sighs> okay. Success. <laughs> <laughs> Hits the ground. You're able, easily able to deke out of the way. I'll then use my last uh, to use a special attack. Um he is going to try and trip you. Uh, so this will be... A... Let's see here. Uh, athletics, unarmed. Okay, so you can use athletics, unarmed, which is your combat style. So why don't you give us a combat style versus combat style. Here we go. I succeeded with three... Oh, and I did not. You are knocked down prone. Uh oh. Now, here is. There's purple for prone. Here's where we look and see what a rise is. Because if a rise is a secondary action, a rise is a secondary action. Now, you know this thing's out of AP, but I have told you it has stamina. So you could risk standing up for free, or you could spend uh, stamina and use an arise action on its turn to scramble to the feet, and I can't take an attack of opportunity on you. What do you think? Or nothing. You could just stay on the ground for now. No, I'll, I'll attempt to scramble to my feet. Okay. Uh, do you want to spend the stamina to do that? Yeah. Okay, so you got your extra action. You're no longer prone. Away with you, purple dot. I am almost out of everything. Uh, then, Sabaka, you have, what, two AP left? Yep. What would you like to do? I'm going to move in. Okay. Oh, hey, you have your rapier out, don't you? Yeah. So that's rapier distance? Yep. I have... No AP left, and I'm not spending points to defend because this thing is not scared of you. Not yet. Did I have my rapier out? I thought I did. You did. Oh, but you did aim and oh. fire, though. I didn't aim. I just fired. Well, no, no, but I mean, like, I, I'm using metaphor. You would need two hands in order to fire that. Oh, yeah. you do? Yeah, yeah. To fire a, a crossbow, you need two hands. Okay, then I couldn't have my rapier up then. So then would you want to spend one AP to draw your rapier and then run in? Yes. Okay, so go ahead and make your and attack roll. Yeah, if you're going to try and hit I'll the troll. Run, run to here and drop my crossbow. Okay, that's free. And and pull, draw my rapier for one AP. Okay, and you have one left. And attack with the rapier. Go, go right ahead. That is a hit. Go ahead, roll for superior. Uh, this thing is unarmored, so you will add four. Nice hit. This thing is not pleased. Uh, that was 11 damage, so... And I'm going to get my advantage from... Uh, yes, because it didn't defend. What would you like to use your advantage for? Um, I'm going to... Uh, oh, wait. I, so... Tharkul has already used all his. Yep. And so we're basically going to get into the round. So if it says um, within one round, if we attack it in the beginning of the next round, does that count? Yeah, that's fine. It'll carry over. So if you want to <laughs> use, um, uh, what was it? Press advantage, attack only, plus 10 to the next melee attack. Yep, that's fine. To help somebody get. Absolutely. Hit on it. Okay. Then that is, unless you wish to spend a stamina point to make another attack this round? No. Nope. Okay, top of the round. Let's do one more round, then we'll call it a session. Can you take down the troll? Sabaka, you're first. You have three AP once again. Um, can you pick up the torch with his offhand? Yeah, with one AP, sure. Yeah, okay. And then attack... Ooh, a torch on one. Yeah, let me see what the range is. Uh, 
Let's see, I'm, I'm curious if it has the stats for it in here. Um, mm, 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 mm. It's probably the same as a club, right? I think so. Yeah, club or a mace is a two meter. So it's probably the same. Because like, a rapier isn't two meters long. It's probably your arm that's... Yeah, it's the effective range of it. It's not... Um, yeah. So, so that's probably the same for the torch. Well, a short sword is only one meter. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess there's a degree of abstraction uh, with it as well. I'll say the torch does 1d4 uh, fire damage. Okay. So, uh, and it's not part of your combat style, which means you'd just be testing against uh, your agility. This is kind of the same, isn't it? Well, but I'm just not getting all the bonuses from that. That's it. You're just not getting, you get plus 20 to your agility when you're rolling with your combat style. Right. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'll attack it with my rapier for now. Okay. So, but you do have the fire in, in your hand or that, that in your hand. Go ahead and yep. make your attack roll for your first AP or uh, second AP. With the 10. Uh, that is, that 41 is your roll? Yeah. Yeah. Solid hit. And that's max damage. So. Uh, another solid hit. This thing is not pleased with you. And it, uh, what do you um, do that advantage? Um, you know, roll it forward. <laughs> yeah, because I can't do anything to its armor. Can't damage its armor. Choosing location doesn't seem to matter. So yeah, I think I'll just roll that... Plus 10 forward again. Okay. Uh, you have one more AP. Do you want to attack again? No, I'm going to keep it in case it swings at me. Okay. They're cool. You have three AP. What are you doing? Uh, well, I'm going to take a step back, get it into the correct range. Okay. Then I'm going to use my attack here. Try and hurt it. That is a solid hit. Go ahead and roll superior uh, nine. Nice. So that is 14. Look at this. Boy, oh boy. And you have advantage. What do you want to spend that on? Um, I'm going to spend that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm going to press my advantage plus to get 10 plus 10 to my next attack. You got it. Go ahead. And I'll do a second attack. Yep. Yeah. That's a hit again. Oh, for superior nine. Oh, man. Nine. Okay. Look at this. Wearing them out a little bit, but. Yeah. Ugh. You have one more AP. Do you want to do anything with that? Um. You're saving it for defense. Yeah. I think I'm going to save it. Okay. Troll time. <laughs> So at the start of its turn, it makes an endurance test to regenerate. Ah, uh, crap. <laughs> endurance, it, it's only a 50 though, 50, 50 chance of, of uh, succeeding. I failed. It doesn't regenerate this turn. Then, um, so right now, Sabaka is the only one in range. So Sabaka, I am gonna attack you. Yeah. Would you like to defend or counterattack? Yeah. I will counterattack. Love it. And the first one doesn't count. That's a fucking cool. That dual stability is really neat. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and roll. I got a six for my degree of success. Oh, no, that's a fail. And... Oh. oh. Yeah, I don't wait, think wait, I've wait, got Wait, 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 wait. What did Tharkul, cool? what was your last uh, advantage spent on? Oh, plus 10. Didn't you set up? Because you didn't use the advantage for anything else other than set up, right? Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. So that's actually a 49. <laughs> nice job, guys. Go ahead and roll for Pretty superior. Cool um, yeah, because a 49 and you rolled a 7 on that. So then you beat me because I rolled a 6. Yeah. Four points. Okay. Uh, and he's unarmored. So that is, look at this. 
So he swings at you, and you cut underneath and uh, run along the up side of his arm. Uh, he's furious at that. He is going to... I'm going to step right here. You've already used all your attacks for the round, right? And I'm spending one stamina to do a sweeping strike. I'm going to attack everyone in reach. He swings around at, at each of you. Would I either or both again. of you like to defend? I'm going to counterattack. You're going to counter. Okay. Oh, you've already attacked twice I'm, this I'm round, gonna, and you've counterattacked once, right? I'm going to use my uh, stamina point for an AP. No, the AP is fine. But how many? Haven't you made two attacks so far this round? Um, like on top of the counterattack. What, what were your first two actions? Uh, picking up the torch and then attacking. All right. So yeah, you're good. Ignore me. That's fucking awesome. Okay. So um, I just have to spend my stamina to get an AP back. Okay. And then Tharkul, you are evading. Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, okay. So I make one attack and, and compare it to you guys. Uh, I got th uh, th three degrees of success. Shoot. I did not succeed. Okay. And Tharkul, you're oh, a success. Oh, my evade was a 16, yeah. Yeah, and what your two, uh, you would need to spend one luck to make that a three degrees of success and beat me, or tie. Yeah, I think I would do that then. Okay, so you, whoa, duck out of the way, and unfortunately, as the sweep comes along, it hammers into uh, Sabaka. Uh, oh, it's splitting too. <laughs> splitting my lip and my face. Uh, and my... So that is five, uh, ten points of damage. So minus your one armor is nine. What's your wound threshold? Um... Come on, ten. Eleven. Awesome. So it hits you, ugh, but you don't take a wound. Uh, I've already attacked twice, so then... It will... Um, it will try and uh, knock uh, Tharkul prone again. So give us a uh, oh, shit. combat test. I succeeded with a three. Oh, yeah. not prone again. <laughs> All right, so you're purple prone once again. Uh, you could spend that last stamina if you'd like to try and uh, arise once right. again. Or you yeah. can just see how Let's much... do it. Okay. So you scrabble Let's your feet once again. Uh, we're over time, guys. Do you want to do one more round? You want to yeah, call we could do one last round. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then Sabaka, you have three AP. What do you want to do? Um, I'm going to strike at it with my rapier. Okay. Uh, yeah. I say, you know, the fire is very much like uh, it is in D&D. If you want to prevent it from regenerating. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, you know what? I'll use the torch. Okay. Uh, should I use my... No, I, Give I us a, just a, a percentile roll against your agility. Okay. Damn. Ugh, so you're not able to get with that first attack. You have two AP left. Try again with the torch. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, that is a hit. I can't defend. Go ahead and roll 1d4. Nice. So look at this. Um, its armor does not protect it from it whatsoever. And it does extra damage as this thing catches fire like a bunch of dried leaves. It's not burning, but you really badly fucking hurt that thing. It squeals and uh, rears to the side you have one more AP. Do you want to bank that or you want to do something with him? Um, can I toss the torch to Tharkul? Uh, you could try, but remember his weapon's a two-handed weapon. 
great, but I'm, I'm counting on him realizing how bad the torch hurt it. Uh, Thurkle's hits seem to be hurting it about as much as well. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. then I'll just keep the torch in my own hand, and I will... Um, I've attacked twice, right? Yep. You just want to wait for so, your counterattack? I, yeah, my counterattack is the only additional attack I'll get. So okay. But I'll, I'll hold my hold my action for or I'll stop Well, yeah, you've seen how this thing acts, right? So, Thar, cool. Yeah. You're up. What are you doing? Okay. Uh, first things first. Strike this thing. Uh, you'll. Oh yeah, it's big enough, so it's within range. Oh, uh, is that a hit or a miss? It's uh, against my strength, right? It's just a miss. So. Uh, okay. Dang it. Second, I think surely it's because the yeah. little purple was on there. Oh yeah, I guess I I just have to get up first. No, no, right? you, you you spent your AP, your stamina to do oh, that. Oh right, yeah, yeah, I did yeah, that, right. yeah. So you have that. two more AP. What would you like to do? Oh my god. And. One more AP. Anything you want to do with that? Or you <laughs> save it to defend? Yeah, I could move away from it a bit, though, right? Yeah, absolutely. To try and draw it away from... Yeah. I'll try and draw it away from... Uh... Sabaka. <laughs> if you'd like, you could give... Uh, you could spend that AP to do an intimidation check to try and draw it to you instead of Sabaka. Yeah, that's all. You, you, you don't have a defense, though. Sarkul's got that at. fucked up voice, right? Yeah. Uh, so you actually get a plus... Tw what is it? Um, You get plus 10 for persuade intimidate checks, and that's compared against your strength. Nice. Okay, here we go. Do we persuade... Oh, oh my gosh. Which is horrible. I think he may be thinking if you die in here, you'll become an undead. Yeah, probably there is there is a bit of fear there. All right, so then on this thing's turn, uh, Sabaka, it's going to attack you. Okay. Now, are you counterattacking with your rapier? No, I'm counterattacking with the fire. Okay. So then it oh, isn't. Oh, yes, wait, it's not as effective, right? Yeah, it's only the, you're, you don't get the extra plus one from that uh, thing. You know oh, what? I'll contact my well, first, first thing, start of its round, I'm spending a stamina to hyper metabolize. Oh, I took fire within one range. I can't. Uh, I can't regenerate. So I'm just going to hit it once, once around with fire. Hold That's on. good. I get a minus. 50. I can't, because I took fire damage, I cannot regenerate, and I cannot use my special ability to gain extra hit points. So, uh, I, sorry, then yes, uh, you don't need it. you only need to hit it once per round with fire to forestall its uh, regen, so if you'd like to make your regular roll. Okay, uh, okay this will be an interesting one. I succeeded with a 6, but I you succeeded succeed with a 7. Five. Oh, yeah, because I got the extra successes from Dueling my... Dueling weapon and your duelist thing, yeah. This was a counterattack? Yeah. I take it. Go ahead. Uh, so we both succeeded. So that is 10 points of damage. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Screams in pain as your rapier carves into it. Um... Its second attack will be on you. You're out of a or stamina points, right? I'm out of stamina and AP. And luck and everything. So and luck. this is... Oh, another hit on Sabaka. Oh, no. Uh, I tried. <laughs> fuck, are you... I'm just so No one thinks I'm going easy on you. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, so that is seven points of damage reduced to six by your... Uh, armor, so not a wound either, and then I'm going to make a willpower test for this. It's already taken <clears throat> fire damage once, and it's pretty badly fucked up. Uh, I am going to... You don't have any AP left, so this thing's going to race down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh... 13 and then I'll dash 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13. Okay. You can hear this thing howling and racing down the corridor. Um, the two of you spare a moment of kind of looking at one another across this uh, spider web covered uh, chamber. And the question that seems to each of you seems to be posing to each other is do we pursue or do we flee? Mm -hmm. And we will leave our session on that unanswered question. <laughs> so then, guys, that brings us to the end of the back to Bleak Falls Barrow session. And Dave, your first session playing the unofficial Elder Scrolls RPG. So that was awesome. I am glad you enjoyed. I had a lot of fun with that. That was it. It's man, it's a it's just such a fun game. Uh, but you know what? I got also got to say, and no offense to all the players we're missing tonight, because the guys are great. I love playing with everybody. But there's something about a Dave and Jeff Friday night in a <laughs> in a undead haunted barrow. <laughs> I'm like, geez, are we in the barrel maze again? Like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you do have a lot of drakes that you've managed to recover thus far. And, uh, you know, it, this is this is something I, I think it would be interesting about, like, an ongoing game is, like, you got all this money. There's a decision of, like, okay, do we just fucking, like, do we go back to town, deal with whatever we're encountering along the way, and then, like, stock up on stuff we would need? Like, uh, you know, whatever the equivalent of alchemist fire is and maybe hire a mage who actually can cast some fire stuff because that would be a way of approaching this troll problem, right? Right, yeah. like find a mage who can cast fire because we know it's weak to fire. Yeah, yeah, and you're gaining XP along the way. Like, it, it's funny you mentioned barrow mage because I, I feel like the game itself, the way the XP works, the way the looting works, the way gear works, there's tons of great ways to, to be reinforcing the rewards of players who want to run a kind of like, I mean, there's, it's a perfectly functional and great game in general as well, but for that type of play, it's hmm. got all the stuff you would need for, for playing a really fucking fun dungeon crawl. There's also sort of a natural sort of point where you reach the end of your resources where you're like, okay, I need to take a short rest and get a stamina point back and maybe heal up a bit. Uh, or maybe go and do a long rest, heal up a little more, get all our magicka back, and then head back in. You guys did this with no healing, by the way, too. Yeah, I was just looking at I've got two potions. I, I could quaff a potion and chase it down the hallway. You could knock both mm -hmm. those back at 16 uh, hit points back, which is almost, which is you back up to full once again. Well, I could drink one and I'd be like three quarters. Oh, and then if you. I get wounded again, I could, you know, drink another one. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> what are you what are you fighting with? A torch and a potion of healing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well then, uh for those oh and thank you very much for uh, for uh, what do you call it, for you guys uh the, I absolutely love running this game. So this was a really really fun uh opportunity to introduce you guys again and get you further into Bleak Falls Barrow. I can tell yeah. you Dave will pro will know this already, but Jeff, we're not even done the first level. Mm. There are two levels to Bleak Falls Barrow. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, then for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for our return to, what I say, back to Bleak Falls. Uh, as is always the case, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, the campaign, or the game we're playing, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section down below, and I'll endeavor to reply uh, in a timely fashion. I'll mention again, as I did at the outset, there's a link in the description of this video where you can get this game for free. Uh, they have, uh, I, we played the third edition, there's a third and RR, both are really cool and, and, and have their own uh, you know strengths. I happen to prefer the third edition, uh, but uh, the RR one is quite good as well, and there's nothing stopping you from grabbing both. The loot table we were rolling at the end is actually from the RR edition because uh, there isn't a comparable one in third edition. So, um, in addition, there's there is a, a Discord server. I don't have a link to it in there because I don't have a link. I'm not part of it, but there's a Discord server for the thing as well that's linked in the Reddit post where that's linked down below. So if you want to learn more about it and talk to people who designed it, it's all on over there. Very cool. I like those designs, Dave. That's cool. 
Um, there is also a link down below uh, to the Dungeon Musings Discord server where we have a channel dedicated to uh, Sorted Games where I will be posting Sabaka's uh, stats uh, tonight because uh, I have uh, he was new to the campaign. Um, there's also a, uh, in addition to that, there's a channels dedicated to most of the other games we run on the channel, as well as most of our campaigns, uh, as well as tons of other great channels like GM discussion or um, uh, finding a group or just general, you know, bullshitting about different games. Um, lots of great people over there. You are more than welcome to join us. Uh, there's also a link down below to our friends at Noble Knight Games. Noble Knight Games is the preeminent uh, unionized retailer of hard to find and out of print RPGs in North America. Not only do they have a great selection of new role playing games, board games and card games they have an unmatched selection of hard to find and out of print rpgs if you uh find something in their extensive collection that is not in stock you can put it on a want list and they'll send you an email when it comes in and if you make a purchase of ten dollars or more through their website be sure to enter the code muserwinter all caps all one word it is in the description of the video and you'll save yourself ten percent on your purchase if you're listening to this after uh, April 15th, uh, 2024, come back to one of our more recent videos and we will have the updated discount code for you there. There is also a link down below to uh, something called Heroes Save Villages. That is the charity fundraising campaign that we run on the channel. It benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, a really incredible organization active in over 130 countries, benefiting over 80,000 orphaned and abandoned children. All donations through that link go directly to them. None of it comes to the channel or any other middleman just goes to help out the kids who benefit from their services and um as a small way of saying thank you to the donors if you've donated 25 dollars or more since the start of the year uh, head on over to the charity initiatives channel on the dungeon musings discord server because all month every week we are having donors vote on the different components of our next charity session which we play we have two of them coming on may 4th uh, which will be a pair of star wars sessions Voting is underway right now for the setting for that. And we have settings that are both canonical and non-canonical. Uh, we will also then next week be voting on what heroes the, the uh, players will be playing. Then we'll be voting on what villains and then we'll be voting on what RPG we'll be using. So be sure to head on over there, cast your vote if you've donated $25 or more since January 1st, 2024. And uh, come back each week to cast your vote for the next components. We'll be playing those again on May 4th as is appropriate for some Star Wars games. The last thing I will say is an enormous thank you to our stalwart players for tonight. So Jeffrey and Dave, thank you so much for giving me an excuse to run yet more Elder Scrolls. I had so much fun. And congratulations on getting even further into Bleak Falls Barrow. I'm, we should check the rules for restock because I wonder if it's going to fill up with more undead again. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, who says we're leaving? <laughs> yeah, you know, fair enough. Yeah, that troll ain't gonna kill itself. No, nope. troll ain't gonna kill itself. <laughs> well, it sounds like we will be back sooner than later, but we should be back into our uh, ongoing Kingmaker campaign in uh, two weeks' time. Uh, but until then, we hope that we gave you a few hours to take your mind off the troubles of our world and think about the troubles that these two intrepid heroes, uh, these Tamrielic heroes. Uh, have engaged in going further and further into Bleak Falls Barrow. And until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming. <laughs>